This just in, a brand new episode of The Tripod is coming your way. Get ready for your favorite drunks to curse and wax poetic about some wrestling. Now hit that music, Mangria. Can you dig it? Let's go! and welcome back to the tripod your weekly dose of wrestling fuck shit and talk we're gonna jump right into things but first if he can if you if you may divulge on a little uh saturday night it's probably better than all of ours combined big carpe himself do you have a story to tell the new subscribers <laughs> thank you by the way i noticed the subscribers have went up. The views have went way up compared to our other shit. Like I was telling Sticks earlier, that was our most viewed episode since this incarnation of the tripod. Thank you, pretzels. I appreciate it. Cesar, do you have a, a tale, tales from the streets by Julius Cesar himself? Can you please delight the peoples, the pretzels, your pretzels, Cesar, with a tale from the streets? No. Okay, it's Wednesday night, and you know what that means. <laughs> now, um, yeah, I got off work early last night, so I hit up one of my boys uh, who usually hangs out. I uh, hang out with him all the time. I was like, "Yo, man, what you got going on? You're going out last night?" And he's like, "Yeah, got judges bikini contest." He's like, uh, "Me and me and the other dude are usually hang out with." Him. And uh, he was like, yeah, we got judges because they know the owner of the bar we're going to. And he's like, yeah, we can probably get you in. So we went in there, uh, met up, you know, drank some drinks, getting lit. And then, uh, yeah, so we were up front judging bikini contest. We have this big, uh, is the East Coast surfing competition. It comes in the summer sometimes. Uh, it's a big event down at the beach. Um, and there's always a bikini contest. So this was the prelims. So it's like you got to go through like five or six prelims. They take like the top four and they're the ones who make it into the final, final show at the, uh, at the event. Mm -hmm. And uh, whew, there was some hot women. Let me tell you. Okay. So uh, yeah, it was fun last night. Uh, we got a free calendar. <laughs> like there was a, yeah, there was a, cal there was from a calendar. From the girls that were in the contest? No, no, it's, it's like oh, some okay. other one. So like this, yeah, it wasn't those. It was because these are like, uh, Kind of like people who kind of live close by come to mm -hmm. all these prelims and stuff because uh, you earn money and then you go on. You know, like I said, I think I think there's a prelims. I think a bunch of them go. There's two like big final ones, and then those group go to like the actual actual final event. Um, but yeah, it was like free calendar. We were up front, and then there was a bunch of just like just ignorant folks up in there. So you know how that goes. Uh, but no, it was a bunch of fun last night. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. There was ignorant, there was ignorant folks at the bar. Hey, at the bar, can you believe it? I, I'm good thing I'm sitting down. Yeah, I'm about to say <laughs> I, I was surprised myself. What are these ignorant <laughs> folks here at the bar, just hanging out? Um, but no, man, they were all they were all pretty good. And we got to take pictures with them with the with the winners well, at the well, end of the night. Cesar, the, the 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 world wants to know. We're, were you in the kitchen this morning making an omelet? No, I was not cooking up no plain <laughs> omelet. Uh, most of those women were wife down. Oh, uh, what? I ain't trying to. No, I ain't trying to Eiffel Tower no, no broads in the street last night. I had to work this morning. Can't be out there super ignorant, you know, Eiffel Tower and some king contest chick when uh <laughs> when you got work in the morning. Uh. That, 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 was a, that Tuesday passed already, didn't it? What was yeah, that yeah. Well, you know, I mean, some of them bros was gonna get a fat BBC. That's all <laughs> I'm gonna say about that. If they well, were willing. 
Thank you, Cesar. Uh, if you want to be in the Hall of Fame chat, you're going to have to earn that shit because you ain't going to see any of the stuff we saw. Uh, let's move on to some wrestling talk. Uh, thank you, Cesar. From, that was another Tales from the Streets. Uh, before we move on to our usual talk, I want to get your guys' opinion on the release of Cesaro. Not release. He was con- they, they couldn't come to an agreement. On his contract, Cesaro, Cesaro, Cesaro is finally free to go do whatever the fuck he wants to be appreciated, hopefully wherever he goes. Stixie Drip Drip, I want your thoughts first on Cesaro is now free. The shackles are off. Your thoughts? Well, as much as I'm disappointed that he's not in WWE to collect the bag, actually, I'm kind of excited for him because there's so many opportunities out there and there's so many people that we can see him wrestle and i'm very very excited to see where he goes and just the the endless opportunities that we will be able to see him actually do and maybe just maybe we will see him actually get a somewhat legit title and actually have a reign for for a company or multiple companies so i'm as much as i'm disappointed that he'll I mean, I don't know if he'll collect the bag, the WWE bag that he probably could have. He'll probably be able to make just as much, if not be able to make some money. And we'll get to see more of him and a brighter future for him, hopefully. And now the woods stands alone. Uh, Cesar, I want to know, sir, Mm -hmm. before I get your thoughts on this situation, if we were doing a tripod currency episode and it was Cesaro dream matches, who would be your hundred dollar bill for old Claudio to go one on one with? What with anybody? Your top one hundred dollar bill. Who is your one hundred dollar bill dream opponent for Cesaro? Ooh. Who would I want to see Cesaro? That's a good currency, by the way. That's, That's a, a good, good episode. Currency, by the way. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I'll give uh, let's see, play anybody. Oof. Uh, there, there's just too many to pick, so I'll give like a top three of what I would pick. You already know mine. Uh, I would want to see, and actually, these would, and funny enough, they're all NXT past champions. Hmm. Um, Definitely Adam Cole, baby. Nice. Definitely Adam Cole, baby. Definitely Finn Balor as the prince when he came back to NXT. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just got to know how strong he is. She could actually pick up and slam Keith Lee's fat ass around the ring. I would have to know. If he could, that match would probably be. If he could lift and slam Lee like Dijakovic was, and we all know Cesaro's too strong. Too strong. Uh, I think that would be a really... Imagine if he swung Keith Lee's big ass around if that ring. If he rate. picked up and slammed Keith Lee, JR would skeet barbecue sauce. So, yeah. First of all, I think he could. I think he could pick up and slam Keith Lee. Could he swing Keith Lee? Because the swinging, you have to really pick that guy off the ground. Did he swing Big Show one time? I, I think, yeah. I'm pretty sure. He could probably he that means he can probably lift Keith Lee, which would be a crazy, crazy match. So that would be the your hundred dollar bill. I would have to pick between one of those three guys. Okay. Well, mine would be Ray Phoenix, of course. He'd believe kill it, Ray Phoenix. He'd throw Ray Phoenix into the eighteen. Believe 18th. it or not, I know he's incredibly brand new. I want this kid tested. Send Hook to take on Cesaro and see what that boy is made of, ladies and gentlemen. He would throw Hook into the 23rd row. <laughs> <laughs> the boys weigh like a buck 20. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it'd be good, but Cesaro could throw Hook to the 23rd row. And you know what? It, it might have happened already. Uh, I apologize in advance if it has happened, but Cesaro versus Walter would have been incredible. I don't think he's, I don't think he's fought Walter. Uh, Sticks, do you have your top three you'd want to see Cesaro face? Uh, I agree with Cesar of Adam Cole, baby. I would go Josh Alexander. Mm, of course. And, and uh, 
Psychologically, I like to go uh, him and Sammy Callahan. Okay, I like it. It's different. Well, we all forgot Kenny. Cesaro versus Kenny. Kenny is, is kind of too obvious. That's why I kind of left him out. Yeah, but it'd be a great match. It would be a great match for sure. I'm just saying, you know, that's low hanging fruit, Cesar. No, nah, no, nah, man. That's that was oh, Adam Cole. Bay Bay. <laughs> uh, okay. Heads, brother Quota is AEW. Tails, NXT. Switching it up. We're mm. going. It's Wednesday night, and you know what that means. We are kicking shit off with A.T. Dub. It was a 10-team battle royal to determine the teams that move on to revolution. The best friends hug, and we don't get Excalibur's line. He's fired. Uh, JR says that's a bad idea, especially when they're on the apron. He's spitting facts. Mm -hmm. Uh, Matt Hardy disappointed in private party who were eliminated. Jurassic Express look on as the teams keep getting eliminated. Orange Cassidy helps Trent stay in. Totally tried helping Cash, but it got Cash eliminated instead. Crowd goes nuts when Trent and Santana face off. Final four are Johnny Hungy, Uncle Dax, Matt Cuck, and Kyle O'Reilly. Fish screws Uncle Dax. Matt tosses Johnny. Kyle fakes arm injury and tosses Matt for the win. Fish O'Reilly and Cuck's bicker in the ring. Hangman comes out and attacks Red Dragon. The Cucks step aside. Adam Cole, Bebe, and Hangman brawl. Johnny Hungy tosses Kyle back into the ring to get attacked by Hangman. It's story time. Hangman says to the camera, "That's no, Fish goes, that's copyright infringement. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, the better Adam threw Cole in the six-feet hole and made a boom, basically, at Revolution. He was telling the story of Revolution. No one really cared. Uh, Tony interviews Brian Danielson about Danny Garcia. Uh, Brian name drops Regal. That was all that was special about that. Cesar, it was, you know how they love their tag teams. And a fuck ton of people in the ring at once. What did yep. you think of the kickoff to Dynamite this week? Uh, no, I thought this was good for a gimmick match. It was pretty good. It was well, well set up. Um, yeah, <laughs> that already being... Disappointed in private party is still fucking funny every time. Uh, surprised he didn't cheat more. You should have thrown them the nuts. That'd have been funny. I'm trying to nuck somebody. Um, what else happened? What are some good spots? Yeah, Trent. Trent's always gold, man. That fucking guy, Trent. And it's no longer Trent. Trent. Yeah, it's Trent Beretta. <laughs> Trent Beretta. Yeah, he got his last name back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, owns Cassidy out there. Uh, helping cheat. Where was a uh, where's that Asian fuck there with? Uh, uh, Mueller uh, Yuda? Yeah, Yuda. Why would he out there helping him cheat? What the fuck is he doing? Nothing. He, he had an him. algebra test with um the dude from yeah. NXT. What's his name? Uh, Andre <laughs> James. No, no, so Singapore. The Singapore guy. Uh oh yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh what else was there? There were some good spots. Yeah. Didn't one of the Red Dragon throw out the other cup? Did they throw out Young Cup? Yeah, that was at the end. Yeah, it was. No, uh, no, but did they, did they throw both of them out? How did the other one get eliminated? I don't. I, these are the only notes I remember. Uh, I, I remember. thought it was fuck shit. Like the other one got eliminated by like a Red Dragon too. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. We don't come here for facts. Uh, but no, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, Brian Danielson name dropping Regal. Could that be some hints? Or you think Regal won't betray WWE to jump ship? I don't know. Probably. Or are you just paying respects to the man? Just paying respects. Big ups to Regal. And big ups to Stallion Pete. Stallion Pete, always. <laughs> Black Floyd Sticks, I got to piss. A uh, Sticksy Drip Drip, 10 fucking tag teams. It's a battle royal. Whoopity woo, AEW. Uh, what did you think of the kickoff of this night? You know, I, I, it's a good, I think it's a good idea, but it's also a very bad idea because it's, it's such a slog. In the beginning of these, because you got, especially when you have both members, like I understand if you do like a member from each kind of makes it a little bit better, but then it's just, I mean, it's just such a, it's so, it just drags on until you finally get down to like the last few people. And then that's when it starts picking up. I, I mean, I, I, in my opinion, I think we're going to get Red Dragon, Jurassic Express. I think we're going to get the Young Cucks as the finals. 
I mean, it's just, it's just coming down to that. It was just a matter in this match of who was going to turn on who. And we saw it was Red Dragon was going to do whatever it was going to take. And it all in all, it's not a bad, it wasn't a bad match. It was a good, it was a good thing that they got this in, in the beginning to kind of get it out of the way. That way you can kind of flow, the rest of the card could flow. So, but all in all, it wasn't that bad. I mean, this, there were some good spots. And with all these tag teams, I, I just wish we would have had. I wish we would have had the Lucha Bros. I mean, I'm a, with them bringing that in there, that would have been really good. We didn't really have that high-flying team. We could have had it with Private Party, but it kind of seems like they're on the down slope with them. So, but all in all, it wasn't that bad of a match to open up, and it, we're, we're, one, we're one team away from having that match. So it'll be interesting to see who we get going forward. Are you going to get the pay-per-view? More than likely, yeah. That's next. Is that next Sunday? I, I yeah, yeah, it is. So, are you? you? You know, I'm terrible with money. I'm gonna fucking get that shit. You know, I am. Yeah. <laughs> so, I oh, by the way, uh, yeah, it was a clusterfuck. The ten man and, and, and me being eh, satarded, I would have been all disoriented. I would have punched my own tag partner in the face by accident because there were shoulder to shoulder people in there. You couldn't really see what the fuck was going on. If they had one member from each team, that would have made way more fucking sense. But, you know, Tony Skeets is such a genius. Booker, uh, two-time Booker of the Year, man. Two-time Booker of the Year. That's true. And uh, what did you think of the name drop by uh, Brian Danielson to Mr. Regal? I would be very, very surprised if Regal shows up on AEW just because on after he was released, the, the tweets that he put out on how – how much WWE meant to him, all the stuff that Hunter and Michaels helped with him and stuff like that. But if you got, I mean, we all got bills out here, man. And if yeah. they, if they're going to bring you a, a bag of cash, money talks, man, especially during these times, money talks. So maybe he shows up and he can do some, a few one-offs here and there. Maybe he's one of the trainers that's going to be with Mox and, and Danielson, maybe he's going to be one of those to help lead that that fuckboy cult that they're going to have. But it was it was nice for Regal. I mean, it was very pretty nice for him to get his name dropped on primetime Wednesday night TV. Tony Skeets is going to back that Brinks truck full of euros to Regal's fucking house. Beep, beep, beep. Come out there with his spot of tea. Uh, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Moving on. MJF comes out. Tony wants Punk to murder MJF. MJF trying to play it straight. I thought he was putting us on. He says he loves pro wrestling and ATW says he has severe ADD, plays the juke card. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it because, you know, fool me once, you know, and then he mentions punk leaving wrestling again. Then he had me at this point. He's actually cutting a very good promo. I was like, what? Even Tony was sympathizing for this shit. Punk comes out to steal his thunder. Ask if that was true. Was that true? MJF just leaves. I, we didn't get it. We didn't get the, ah, I fooled you guys. Fuck you guys. I hate everybody. Um, even on Twitter, like they found the actual story that he posted on the wrestling classic. Uh, the, the, everything he said was legit. So I was, I was taken aback, I must say. It was a great promo. Punk played it up to this um, storytelling mjf you know he's a master at it and he's making us care again he's making us care again about a cm punk match of all fucking things uh sticks what did you think of this uh promo master class by maxwell jacob friedman this guy sold the i mean i i you gotta take this with a grain of salt because this guy is literally the most vile most hated person in AEW, but a part of me is like this, this guy's, this could be legit. I mean, this guy could be telling the truth. And this is another reason why this guy is the best thing that AEW, outside the good doctor, Maxwell Jacob Friedman is the best wrestler that they have. And his mic skills are second to none this was a hell of a promo and it's going to i mean we're gonna we're obviously going to be waiting to see if he 
pulls the rug out from underneath us next Wednesday, or if he does, if he rides it all the way to Revolution next next Sunday, if he finally, if he's, if it's pulls the wool over our eyes. But I mean, this was so fucking good, and I wouldn't expect anything less from MGF. You know, Cesar, when when uh, the match at Revolution starts and Punk, he's kind of respectful to MJF. MJF kicks him in the balls, wins the match somehow, and then cuts a promo afterwards. You didn't see the other post I posted on Wrestling Classic. It said, April Fool's, you dumb motherfuckers. No. <laughs> what did you think of this promo by MJF? This is a great promo by MJF. Only problem I have with it is you said it's going to make us care about a CM Punk match. Who's going to care? <laughs> you think I'm going to care? Please tell me you think I'm going to care. Okay. <laughs> you can get you can get 20 of the hottest wrestling chicks ever. Line them up. Liv, uh, Gigi, Mandy, whoever you want. Line them up butt naked in the ring around the ring while seeing punk matches, and I still won't care. Okay? Come oh. on. And this is a man coming off judging a bikini contest. My God, Cesar. My God. Yeah. Hey, I still wouldn't care. You could you could have uh, the Big Brunch Cantina specials with all those hot women, and all of them have a plan B on in the morning, and all of them are clean STD free. I still won't care. Okay? You could put $2 billion in the ring, and that crack of Mr. Beast himself would be like, see, hey, Cesar. If you care about the CM Punk match, I'll let you grab as much money as you can hold in five minutes getting out of that ring. I still wouldn't care. Okay. God himself, herself, or whatever freaking deity you believe in could walk and saunder their ass down that ramp, walk into the ring, and say, Caesar, I will grant any three wishes like a goddamn genie you want to right now as long as you care about this CM Punk match. And I'll say, hard pass, sir, and go straight to the ball. Okay? Ain't nobody caring about no CM trash while he's wrestling on TV. This is just a give him his win back. There's no way. There's no way he's walking out without the dub. Yes, it's going to be a master class. CM Punk's going to have to go to new heights to put away MJF. And MJF is going to sit there and he's going to have a tear in his eye. And CM Punk's going to remember like that promo he cut on Wednesday. And you're right. Then MJF's going to put on the ring, punch him in the dick. And then CM Punk's going to have probably a cup on because he didn't believe it for one goddamn second. And then pick that bitch up, hit him with a GT piece of shit. And then MJF, then he pins MJF. So technically he is beaten. Everybody he's faced in AEW because he got his win back and then saunder his gay fruity 68-year-old having ass outside of that ring thinking he outsmarted everybody and he's the best in the world and take his ass into the back. And then after Adam Cole, baby, gets beat by Hangman Adam Page, baby, then CM Punk can be like, I want the title next because I'm CM Trash. And if, I'm best in the world. If that happens verbatim, it's going to blow my fucking mind, man. <laughs> Cesar, just... Cesar Damas, you know, he, he, he's he been correct in the past, so I wouldn't put it past uh, this, this from actually coming. happening. <laughs> shout out to the duck. Coming a mile away. It's a mile shout, away. Out, shout out to the duck hunt shirt, too. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I love this shirt. <laughs> uh, 2.0 and Danny Garcia cut a promo on Brian backstage with Tony. Uh, then it's the Black Magic Crackers versus Pac and Penta, Penta Oscuro. Yeah, He's eating his soul. He's eating uh, his soul. With, with a new I mean. That's what Oscuro means. Spanish lesson for the day. Oscuro yeah. means skeeting your black skeeting your soul. Google it. Google it. Google it. Um, yeah, uh, he's, he's got a new entrance and a shovel. <laughs> uh, Alex looking like a Walmart Dracula. Uh, this is a lot of magical, mystical shit from both sides in this. The 450 disrespected yet again as Malachi kicks out. With Penta stacked on Pac's shoulders, Brody chopped Pac, which made Penta deliver a poison rana with the momentum from it. Uh, Penta prevents getting any more black skeet in his soul by covering Malachi's mouth. Then when the most skeet. devastating <laughs> move. In all of sports and entertainment, damn right. Brody jumps pack and Penta. Malachi with shovel about to decapitate Penta. The lights go out. Oh, and boy, who man. is it? 
I hear from Australia a boner popping because it's Buddy Murphy has debuted as Buddy his name. Matthew. There we go. AEW. He is the third member of the Black Magic Crack of Shit. Uh, Brody prevents security from helping. A buddy curb stomps Penta onto chair. The lights out magic shit, they vanish. Buddy goes straight to a tattoo shop to get covered. Cesar, what did you think about the debuting Buddy mm. Murphy Matthews? Good for him. He's got a job again. He can wrestle on main TV. He's a good talent. Bad for AEW. The motherfuckers got too many fucking people. They, they got too many fucking people. We are once again. Hi, Cesar. You're free? Okay, yeah. well, come on down. No. Come on down. <laughs> like, you got all these people at the factory. Like, like we, I think, uh, I think like last, I don't know, Rampage? I don't know. You see all these guys that they're training at the factory. Yeah. If I was training at the factory, and I've been there, let's say I'm, I'm fresh. I may have been there a year or so. Maybe I, maybe a two years, maybe. Maybe I'm a step away from, like, getting on dark. I know that that's the only place I'm going to go. You keep hiring top-tier talent. You only have so much TV time. You got to know, if you ain't getting through that factory in, like, three months because you are just naturally quick with it, athletic and talented, and you can talk on the mic. No punk ass ain't wrestling on TV. You're wrestling on YouTube. <laughs> don't nobody watch that shit. Well, I don't know. People watch that. I don't watch that shit. I don't, I don't watch Dark. I barely watch BTE. Think I'm watching Dark? You think I'm watching six hours of, of garbage niggas in the ring? <laughs> All right. I got to watch 20 minutes to see him trash. And you know how much that pisses me off? I got to watch him just to tell you fuckers I watched it. And now I gotta watch, watch six hours. You watch Dark of Elevation, right? Right. You watch Elevation, right? No, I watch Tay Conti's Instagram page because she posts her match there. I'd rather watch that. Her shaking that butt meat around. Her and Anna J. Holy fuck! Elevation. Yeah, I watch that. Yeah, I get Elevation watching that. <laughs> but I ain't fucking. I ain't fucking watching Darker. You think? You think I'm wasting? You? I got YouTube Premium. Ain't no ads. You think I'm wasting that thing I paid for for some AEW? Some dark elevation? Who on dark elevation? I don't even know. You know what? Because them niggas trash. <laughs> I, I take the trash out on Friday. I don't. I don't take the trash. I don't watch trash on Tuesday. Okay, that's when the trash goes out of this house. Okay, I don't even. I wouldn't even. I had a five hour car ride. I wouldn't even put that shit on. I know it's six and a half hours because they everybody who's trash wrestles. It's like thirty eight matches. So there's no setup. There's no promos. Wait, you didn't see it's Dustin just... Rhodes? You didn't see Dustin Rhodes wrestle who? on Dark? Of... You didn't? You... Who? Dustin Rhodes or? I don't know who that is. That nigga on Dark Elevation. I don't see that nigga. Uh, Buffy. Oh, you talking about Goldust? 20 minutes for him to fucking scroll the fucking result on the bottom of the TV screen on Dynamite yeah. every yeah. fucking Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I I didn't see uh, I didn't see 42 of uh, Jungle Boy's 50 wins. You know why? Because them shits was on Dark, Dark Elevation. <laughs> All right. Uh, she is the first woman in AEW with, uh, I think, like 50, 50 60 50, matches. 50, yeah. Uh... Yeah. 30 of them shits was on dark. I only saw the bitch wrestle for the title maybe 12 times. All right. And I, see, I seen them shits. Didn't want to see them either. Seen them, though. Yeah. I don't got time for dark. Doctor That's... ain't on dark. Is the doctor on dark? Hell no. That's why I seen all Britt Baker's matches. Because them shits ain't on dark. It's on TV. And That's then you got. Hard. I mean, this this match right here set you off on one of your rants of the year, by the way. You want to talk about black magic crack of shit. Now Penta is getting into the black match. I mean, what the fuck? I know. What You got all these, you got, what, all these white dudes, English dudes, Australian dudes, and Mexicans doing black magic, black magic shit? You crack this, and then this, oh, this Brody guy, this nigga some trash. All right, he's just a big, thick neck. Cracker is gonna have his knees blown out in like six months. All right, I, I don't know the drug. How did this nigga get a job? You know what he deserves? He deserves to be on that show I was just talking about. Dark. Is this nigga trash? Send that nigga to dark. All right, and then you keep Buddy with uh, Alistair because that that actually looks better. Alistair's all covered with weird shit and he got half a burnt face, like he was in a fire with Kane back in the day. And then he's spitting black skeet. And then you got Murphy with no ink. 
it's, it, that, that's some yin and some yang shit. Like, why is this cracker so clean? No, he still he still got more baby oil than weekday. That nigga was slick. You know, what kind of black magic cracker shit where you get to disappear when the lights go off and move through time and space and show up in the rain? Is there like a you know there's like one of them uh, baby oil showers in the time and space portal? That motherfucker came out wet. Came out wet. What did them porn star pussy on set? That's how wet he came out, bro. I was like, why are you dripping? Why is your hair wet? You just showed up for some black magic cracker shit. You could have just, you know, had dry hair and a shirt. You got to wear no shirt to get in the ring to beat up some people with chairs. Why was he in full ring gear? You can't beat people up in jeans. I see it all the time on World Star. People fighting jeans in World Star and beat people up. He could have been in jeans and t-shirt. He even had his own t-shirt. You didn't show it up. Get on pro wrestling tees. Tell them hoes and make you a t-shirt. Black magic cracker shit. Black ski on the back. Black That's ski. It. My soul. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I don't know why everybody on some black magic. The, the bastard pop. I think, what did he shoot his, shoot his parents or something? Or shoot his father? That's why he's the bastard now. Uh, he killed his father again, I guess, because like they, they said it more, more gangster with it. They were talking about how he's a bastard now. Nigga always been a bastard. Well, yeah, give it's it a guy black the, ski, even though he's been wearing black his whole fucking career. Give it up to um, the dapper yapper every time. He is a bastard. Bastard. I love it. Uh, you know what, Sticks? I know what happened to, to Alistair Malachi. They uploaded his face, but when he took his picture, half his face was in dark lighting. So now Ooh. it looks like Alistair Malachi has black face. <laughs> <laughs> like like Brett did in the fucking game last year. Uh, Sticks, what did you think? Uh, we get uh, call David Blaine and David Copperfield, all the Davids and their magic shit, because we getting it in ATW. What'd you think of this? So, Buddy went from being a disciple of Seth freaking Rollins yep. to now a disciple of some black cracker ass magic bullshit. Man, I would have rather just stayed as a disciple of Seth freaking Rollins and went through the whole fucking. Dumbass losing an eyeball bullshit. And this know, stuff. He was banging Rey Mysterio's daughter. Yeah. And then fighting Seth Rollins. I'm... Now he's going to fucking go with a guy who fucking has his face all crispy on one side. Mm -hmm. Teaming with another guy that has two blown ass knees. That's probably one fucking gust of wind away from blowing out his fucking knees for a 20th time. And you got to come in and out of the fucking ring and goddamn pitch ass black. So you got to make sure you don't trip over one of these dumbasses running. Nah, the they radio. move through magic in space. They have magic in space powers when the lights go out. Well, shit, they just slide down the ring. It fucking Matthew's so all well done. He just slides slip. right in there. Slithering. Oh, Slithering. I mean, good for Buddy for getting, for getting on TV and getting the bag. But Jesus, man, this... You, I would have stayed in just New Japan and fuck this stuff, man. I mean, they, because he's gonna be, he'll, he'll team up with them. Otherwise, he'll just stand outside the ring all like he usually does, and he'll be getting his fucking fifty wins on, on dark and dark elevation. And the next time we'll see him, he'll have, he'll be on a twenty-five match win streak, coming for that TNT title, and he'll get in in like two minutes, and then he'll have to. Exit stage right in the dark outside the ring, and we won't see him again till another two months later when he's on another twenty match win streak. Casino Battle Royal, he comes in. Yeah. Yep. Fucking Cody comes back for one match only to defeat Buddy Matthews, and he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! You just you just reminded me of the whole Seth Rollins uh, Buddy Murphy thing. After he got done flattening the mattress with Alexa Bliss, he was waiting on a uh, fucking. The Mysterio chick to turn 18. He's like, it's almost time. It's almost, almost time. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> the doctor. The doctor. And Thunder Rosa video package is cool. They, they, they're they getting better on their video packages. I like them. Uh, Eddie, your mother, comes out. Mock security, who is already in the ring. The influencer, Jericho, out uh, with Grimace skin shoes. Uh, Eddie doesn't want to talk. Eddie calls out Tony Skeets to put on a women's wrestling match. He's not a sports entertainer. Jericho says Eddie looks like a jobber, but then he said he can make it to the top. What's a baby face, Eddie says. Says he's jealous of Jericho. Edward, Christopher, uh, I'm a different type of cat dog, Eddie said. I, it, that, that, that was funny to me. It wasn't funny to anybody else. When he said that, I laughed. 
Uh, Jericho says Eddie has achievophobia. Look it up, kids. Uh, you know what that means, Eddie? No, I have a GED. Uh, Jericho calls Eddie's uncle and dad a failure. Ouch. Jericho kept naming the wrong dates for the pay-per-view. Uh, okay. Give, give me the Chris Jericho that your old friend Levesque hated. That was a good line by Eddie. Uh, you are nothing more than a loser, and you always will be, Jericho says. Wow, that was that was a great segment. You know what? Uh, let's stop right there because that was such a good. I mean, this was a great promo dynamite, if you ask me, Sticks. What did you think of this? Eddie head to head with Jericho on the mic. This was really good. Uh, Eddie, Eddie is so good on the mic, and outside of the two uh, fumbles that Jericho had with the date on the pair view it was these two were good going back and forth the uh the promos leading up to their match at revolution will be really good and i'm i'm looking forward to it i'm hoping i really hope eddie gets the win i hope jericho's jericho has enough respect for him to to get that have him win it because i think it would do good for his career and i think hopefully it helps with the push for him to get a really good singles career but it was a really good promo between both these guys what do you think about the shoes? Good. <laughs> were they good, good or were they good? Good. They were good. Job. Cesar Grimace skin shoes. Jericho with his dad bod hanging out there going head to head with your mother. Eddie, what did you think? What did you think of this? Well, I mean, Eddie never disappoints on the mic. Uh, he's a great promo guy. He's been around the business long enough. Uh, once again, I don't think he's ever had a match on fucking dark. You know why? Because he ain't trash. That's right. I'm still calling y'all niggas trash. Next segment. I don't even care. Uh, yeah, Eddie, your mother, out here laughing at the security guards, uh, fucking with Jericho. This this is heating up to be a really good match. No, this promo was on point. And Jer- Jericho don't need no dates and no fucking pay for you, nigga. He just gonna show up and fight. He don't care. He's drunk. Drinking his vodka martinis and shit, and singing with Fozzy on the truck, trying to bang whores that his wife won't find out. You know what I'm saying? Giving these bitches playing beyond. I know Jericho has been out of the game for a while. I know he knows how to cook a mean plan beyond. You can see, you can tell why I cut him. Canadian chip. bacon. <laughs> you know that. You know that's right. Canadian bacon for these hoes. Uh, but no, I thought I thought it was a really great promo. Uh, perfect for those two guys. Two different styles. I think it should be for a great match. Right. It's going to be good. You know, when we're talking about Cesaro, did you guys see that tweet Eddie Kingston sent out about that? He yeah. Said he, he got the ball to show up. Yeah, he won't yeah. show up. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Show up if you got the ball. Yeah. yeah. Your mother. Uh, mother. The AHFO meeting on stairs. These fools rich or not? They don't got their own fucking office. They're always on the stairs. What is this, a fucking 50s doo-wop? Anyway, I digress. Well, there's like 15 of them, man. They're not paying for no big ass office in every stadium. They're there's, on the stairs. There's going to be a tornado trios match at Revolution. Beyond, uh, absolute Ricky Starks. He's no, wait, wait. Say, say who they're fighting. I didn't write it down. I don't give a shit. Yeah, that's the whole point. But you should have said it so we don't care. Or we don't give a shit. Caesar, absolute Ricky Starks. Do the pose versus. For, for, oh, first of all, first of all, don't you disrespect that man like that. Absolutely. It is the Ricky fabulous, Stocks. fabulous, absolute Ricky Stocks. Versus 10 of the Dark Order, who's been Royden lately, I guess. That nigga uh, is jacked. Ricky Starks with P2H. Of course, mm-hmm. Taz joins commentary. His boys are out there. 10 looking like Bane from Batman and Robin from 1997. Google it, kids. Yep. Uh, yep. While in a full Nelson, Ricky tugs at 10's mask. Spear for the win. Uh, Let's get the whole match. Pretty, pretty. That was a pretty good match, you know. Ricky Starks is out there showing why he's absolute Caesar. Yeah, you- and and earn his spot in the face of the Revolution ladder match. We just gotta pray to God that whoever does win this ladder match does not get the Scorpio Sky treatment because he pretty much won this tournament, uh, lost whatever match he had, and went straight in the dark. Which was mentioned you know on Rampage, by the way. That was pretty fucking funny. I ain't watched Rampage. I it was, it was funny. Uh, your boy, Dan Lambert, pointed it all out. 
uh fucking scorpio and ethan page are talking it was funny man uh check that out just for that you get and hook hook winning of, of, beating of course a, well, we all know crackers. you know yeah, there's there's three things that are are great on dark taz is gonna say some fuck shit um dan lambert's probably gonna say some fuck shit and hook's gonna win correct uh stixie drip trip it's 10 versus absolute ricky starks the ft dub champion what do you think? The Usain 10 looking like Bane from the 90s Batman movie. That's exactly what I thought when I've seen this guy last couple of times. So spot on with that. Congratulations. This was a good match. I liked the way how at the end how Ricky grabbed his mask and was able to turn around and use that to help him win. And I'm glad we're getting somebody that isn't a, some muscle in there. I mean, we need it. If we had a ladder match full of meaty men, holy crap. Yeah, they had to reinforce the ladders. We could pull all that meat. Yeah, got to reinforce the ladders. Too many thick motherfuckers trying to climb. It's going to be only big show ladders. Yeah, it's only 30-foot ladders, man. It's only 30-foot ladders because they're way worse 30. Some thick neck crackers to climb up on. Cole and Red Dragon backstage. The cucks are upset. We get a TBS championship match. It's that bitch, Jade Cargill. Damn right. Art Mark versus the bunny. Who's going to win this one? Uh, Matt Hardy comes out bickering with Smart Mark. Uh, Nux and TBS title collide. Hardy and Mark ejected. Jade retains the championship. Sticks. Um, you know, it was nice to look at some butt meat during this match. What do you think? <laughs> you, we all we knew who was going to win, but you know, bunny. You're not, not going to talk about the next part? Uh, Tony tries to get a word, but Jade snatched Mike. I was going to say that after we talked about the match. Uh, we don't care about the match. We only care about the next part. That's true. Matt Hardy, uh, uh, Tony tries to get a word in, but Jade snatched a mic. Who's next? Cue the Goldberg chance. Uh, Tay Conti <laughs> comes out, and I guess we'll challenge <clears throat> Jade next. Uh, my God, I hope fucking Tay <clears throat> her, her, her own her first L. In uh, AE Dub, but I mean, Sticks, what'd you think of the match? I mean, the aftermath, like Cesar said, was way better than the actual fucking match. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the 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 stuff after the match was was all that mattered. This match was congratulations to to Jade on getting t on TV again and racking that that record up. But uh, we're mm-hmm. it's move on. <laughs> also, none of her matches have been on Dark. Just saying. Just say if you if you use a talent on dark, you are trash. Because Jade is like super new. She's still great. She's she 29. Been on dark. 29 and oh. Jeez. What do we think about the green hair? Like it better or worse than the silver? Uh I don't like it. I didn't like it because it clashed with what she was wearing. Wearing? I didn't like yeah. it at all. See, like the silver the went color, with everything. The color scheme was off. Yeah. You know, I'm, my brother yeah. was gay, so I, I always got to comment on the fashion of the matches. That it's just my brother sneaking in there and my, my brother's influence. I got to look at the mm-hmm. outfit. I'm like, ah, nah, it, girl. It's, nah, girl. It's, it's, 2000, it's 2022, man, Gary. If you're 25% gay, man, you can say it. We won't judge you. She needs a change. She should have no, should have kept the platinum. I liked her. I liked her old hair. Why, why she yeah, the platinum went with everything. I liked how she looked like Storm. If that's yeah, like this, I'm sorry. That's where I got the impression, yeah. Because she gets, she comes out and there's a storm coming. You're like, oh, yeah, I that's see. That's what I'm saying. I'd be your black pepper. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting them drawn, girl. Uh, I don't is, bitch is, is Tay going to hand uh, Jade her first L or no? Is this another another L for our girl Tay? I think it's going to be another L. I mean, I would be very, very surprised. Especially with, since we haven't seen Tay on, on TV for a while. I mean, if they were kind of slow building Tay on TV to this, but I mean, our girl has been on TV for uh, for at least a couple of weeks. So, oh, well, she has been fucking sadly, Sammy and ruined his uh, ruined his relationship. And, you know, caused all that drama. Well, sadly, so Cesar's her- right. She was on fucking what Elevation or, or, or Dark, and we're yeah. not gonna watch it on YouTube. We're gonna watch her Instagram uh, recap. <laughs> yep. The only person, well, her and Anna J. The only two people on Elevation and Dark who ain't trash. And that is correct. And uh, Cesar, since you interrupted me and six four hundred times, do you have anything to say about this match? 
No, because that's the only person. Oh, yeah, we all talked about it. There's the only person we're going to talk about is Tay Conti. And then even Anna um, Jay came out. That's it. Tay Conti uh, fighting. And we talked about how bad Jay Anna, Anna came out for the save to save Tay. Of course, anytime we see Tay Jay on our TV, it's uh, eh, so good. Yeah. Uh, Marvin interviews <laughs> Keith Lee. Uh, Starks interrupts. Mind your P's and Q's. Hobbs gets face to face with Lee. That would be interesting. I, weren't you saying last week, Cesar, who gonna pick this guy up? I think yeah, it's all, H might have yeah, a chance. Yeah, you, gotta, you gotta have big thick neck motherfuckers to beat up to pick up a big thick neck motherfucker. I do like the way Starks uh Starks uh, hit him with the slow leap. Exactly. <laughs> Shout out to the Steeler after party. <laughs> Uh, Sticks, you, you looking forward to Hobbs? Hobbs and Shaw, coll- I mean, Hobbs and Lee uh, colliding here? Said Hobbs and Shaw, like it's a rock. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I, I'm very interested in this. I hope we get it. I can't wait. It's going to be. Course, of course, what? they want to tease. They want to tease two big niggas fighting while it's still Black History Month. Uh, you fucking <laughs> racist piece of shit. Tony Skeets, <laughs> of course, you want to tease. Two big slave looking niggas fighting in the rang against each other, you know, why they are there. They ain't picking, they out there picking all the cotton because they super strong niggas and they big thick necks, not like them hard R's in fucking <laughs> WWE. No, you want to have two big, strong, steal your wife, you know, steal master's wife, thick neck niggas fighting in your ring, getting all hot and sweaty, like there's some Django shit. Fuck you, Tony Skeets. I see what you're doing. You got you got a you got a rich white man sitting on that porch drinking some sweet tea. Old Sonic the Hedgehog looking ring out there to be black guy yeah. said, "Go yeah. fight, boys! Fight oh, for go this. fight, boy! Go get him, Poby. Do you go fight for your spot on my on See, my on, farm?" See on NXT we have the hard R's. On yeah. AEW we got the huge R's. <laughs> yeah, we got the thick neck R's on AEW, and he wants to see him fight. But that is approval. Um, I gotta, I gotta give it up for ATW. They got it right two weeks in a row. This time, no fuck shit ending. The main event of the night was Brian Danielson versus Danny Garcia. Uh, blow for blow, move for move. This is fucking awesome. This is a technical wrestler's dream. I really hope Bretzky went uh, caught this match. Uh, this has shades of all kinds of shit. Kurt Angle facing a debuting John Cena. This is shades of Chris Benoit versus Bret Hart on WCW. I enjoyed the hell out of this. Uh, Brian suplexes Garcia from apron to the outside of the ring. That looks fucking dangerous. Uh, Garcia selling that heel hook like a champ screaming. Cattle mutilation didn't get the job done. Garcia with the ankle lock, uh, kicking Brian in the head at the same time. Never seen that before. Uh, Brian counters a dragon screw into goat stomps and then makes Garcia pass out. With a triangle choke, Brian then gets on the mic. He gets jumped by 2.0. Mox for the save. Brian on mic again. Mox versus Brian at Revolution. Wowza. This is going to be good. Cesar, the main event of Dynamite. Brian versus Danny. What did you think? I, I'm going to have to watch it again if it was really that good. I really was just watching it when I got home from work. Uh, I've been super, and I, 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 I fell asleep because <laughs> I was just uh, you know the shenanigans from the streets along with working today in the morning and uh, it was a crazy day at work uh, so I was like literally eating dinner and I was like alright I'm going to just watch it while I eat dinner then I was like well I won't pay attention because there was some chicken and that shit was good and I was fucking that chicken up so I said, I'll wait after I ate the chicken. And then after I ate the chicken and some mac and cheese and some shit, I had put on the match and it was Ricky Starks again. And then there was a commercial and I fell asleep during a commercial. Because, you know, you know, I fell asleep during a commercial because I didn't fast forward it. So I fell asleep. And when I woke up, there was they were in the ring, but it was like no noise. And I was like, is everybody so quiet? I better leave this on mute. Is this match trash? I'm confused right now. It's usually them drunk assholes that like watching ATW are always making noise and sound, no matter who's in the ring. So I was watching it. I was waiting for some sound. And they were fighting in the ring. And I was like, I think this might be some trash. Dave Garcia just might be trash. 
And then by the time I really started paying attention, it was when he dropped his dumb ass outside. I was like, oh, yeah, now right, there we go. We're getting good. So the second part of that match, I watched it. I actually liked it. Then uh, they went to picture in picture again. You know I fast forward through that shit. Uh, so if, <laughs> if everything that you said happened in the picture in picture, I can see it. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, for some reason, yeah, Daniel Bryan had him at the end trapped in his legs and had him passed out while doing this pose. So oh, that just she mentioned in my mind that he's now a pedophile and just wants to wrestle around with young men in the ring and, you know, feel them all up and trap them in his legs. Like a man's head was trapped in his legs. Round where his dick is. And he passed out and Dale Brown was happy about it. So for, I don't know what's happening. It's, that goat, it's the goat funk. He just it's got to be that naked. goat funk. Woo. I mean, maybe, maybe uh, <laughs> Bree ain't, you know, ain't, ain't, you know, ain't riding that beat. She ain't going Bree mode, man. She's like, look, I got these fucking kids. They are a hassle. I got two of them. I got chasing around. Like your dumb ass is on the road. And he's like, I don't like your trash pussy anyway. I like dick now. So I'm going to find all these, these young boys oh and uh, pedophile. And I'm a pedophile Brian. Because <laughs> I'm the goat at being a pedophile. Because I guess he, uh, I don't know, maybe he was like, you know, he was out in Connecticut at WWE signing his exit papers. Then he stopped by Jake's house and found his memoirs. And Jake used to kidnap young boys and, you know, fondle them. And caress their titty balls all up in the all up he, in the he dungeon. Found the cube, he found the fucking cube in his basement. It's like I gotta build me one of these back titty balls. <laughs> yeah. So he found he found Jake's memoir. You know what I'm saying? Or his manifesto. Oh. Yeah, that's what it is. He found his manifesto of life of a pedophile for like 20 years. A story by Jake Travers. And so uh, he read it. Yeah, and he's like, Man, I ain't never caressed titty balls like this. I gotta figure out what that's like. Oh, I mean, fuck. so then. Now he's in AEW. He's still making good money because Tony Skeets backed up the branch truck. And he's like, man, yeah, this is a fresh company. And all these new guys coming out of the factory. I can caress their titty balls, <laughs> make them suck on my goat balls, and then I I can uh I can take over. But I need to make this credible. So I gotta find the next champ, John Mox. He's like, Mox is crazy. Mox don't want to train nobody. He just wants to fight. So I'll say hey, Mox. Yeah, I just need you to back me up in the ring, you know, in case I get jumped or in case the police are after me because you hate police. Like, I hate police because I am now a pedophile. And I want to rub titty balls and get all sweaty with, with, with young boys in the ring and outside the ring. Grow my beard. You know, cold Who the fuck shit. are you coming up with this shit? <laughs> what are you talking Jesus about? Christ. You can't read between the lines? I, it was right there on TV. I saw it. This ain't I great. Know, this, is, this episode is going to be called Titty Balls. <laughs> oh, you okay. didn't see it? It was right I, I there on air. I didn't see it. Sorry. He said all this stuff on air. I see. <laughs> <laughs> the the episode, was, this episode better be goat balls. I'm just saying. You, you know, this my sling TV might have cut that part off. And we I did record the same show. I got Verizon BIOS over here. It shows me everything. That's what I, that's what I saw. I don't know what y'all saw. But I, it was a backstage interview. And he was talking with Tony about finding Jake's memoirs and touching titty balls. It was like a 20 minute interview. You didn't see it? I, I, I seen this. I, 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 I work you, man. I work you, man. I look, see Pretzels, you. I'm sorry. I, I am here to report to you what I see about rap. I watch this shit. This sick man talking about filing titty balls so you don't have to because I am demented. And that's why I'm on this podcast. <laughs> I bring this for you. I'm telling you the sick things this man said on on television, so you don't have to see that. I I, I can take that. Hey Caesar, you got to give the people what they you want. Got to give the people what they want, and y'all want reporting live from the streets and people talking about titty balls and to stay away from sick freaks like Jake Travers and Brian Danielson. We go we gonna stay away from all and see him trash. We gonna stay away from all of them. I'm gonna give you the facts of the show. They gonna talk about wrestling. I'm gonna give you behind the scenes facts. <laughs> What these people are thinking about because they are really sick and demented. We can have an HBO show about this. Subscribe to Caesar's Patreon for more. Yeah, uh, stick the drip trip. It's the main event, uh, titty balls and all. What did you think of the main event? Of <laughs> you gotta name it titty balls this, and all. You gotta name it titty, titty balls and all. Titty balls and all. Sleep. Mox and fucking da and Danielson throw him in the back of the van. 
and they end up back at Jake's fucking cube of doom. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, I didn't see this part. What the hell are you guys You, you need to get cable again. <laughs> fuck this link TV. Yeah, you need to get... I got YouTube TV and I saw this shit, man. <laughs> yeah. That like, got Hulu. He got Hulu Live, bitch. He got Hulu Live to show sports. You know what? YouTube took down my episode of Dynamite and it threw me off. Sorry, I didn't. I missed everything. Okay. Well, you know that's what happens when you give JH the YouTube title and start cracking down more. They're like, man, fuck this guy. <laughs> the algorithm was like, fuck this shit. Take it off. It's done. They, well, they instantly got a text message. Like the president and CEO of YouTube was like. <laughs> JH has the YouTube title. Oh, hell no. Somebody go to this page. Get one of the interns. Watch every single thing. I'm snitching. Hey, Vince. Vince. This nigga had the audacity to have the damn chamber and put it on YouTube for me. Take it down, pal. I got you, fam. I'm going back. Hey, Vince, this nigga got a hell in a cell. Take it down. I got you, fam. I'm like, he had the call, Cassidy, to use the chamber again. I seen it, Vince. I, I seen it live. Did you say call Cassidy? Yeah, the call Cassidy. When That's white the people, name of the episode. When white people have the audacity to do some white people shit, call it is called Cassidy. the call Cassidy. Oh, fuck. My stomach's already hurting. Well, sticks to wrestling. Do you have any comments on the wrestling of the fucking main event? I will say this. Wrestling. He's a wrestler. We're talking <laughs> all about right, wrestling. All right. Let's go, Sticks. Hurry up. We got to move on to the next team. Good. They got it right. I, I, I believe Danny Garcia does have a good future. He'll have a brighter future if he isn't involved with the fucking child petties of fucking Danielson, his wheelman Mox, and the architect of all fucking yeah, all kid fucking pornography, Jake Travers. He will be he will have a bright future if he steers away from all three of those guys. That's all his wheelman. I'm still well, yeah, he's, the guy driving the van. he's that crazy. You need a crazy guy to be driving the fucking van. So you got to do it. And who else is crazier than John Moxley? You got a point. I'm still trying to get over caucasity. All right. Now it's time to move on to the A show of the week. It's NXT. Uh, Braun, he's in ring, giving Santos credit. Q Dolph Ziggler says Braun is the guy in Orlando. Says Braun will be champ until he wants the title and says Braun uh, is barred from ringside during his match with Tommaso Ciampa in the main event. Uh, Cesar, yo. what did you think about Braun and Dolph's exchange at the top of NXT? Damn, that, that did happen. Uh, as always, Dolph cut him down on the mic because Braun Breaker can't talk for shit. Um, I guess he's trying to get over this new gimmick calling everybody kid. Uh, it, I don't know. It sounds weird. Uh, it sounds like something he would say, but I guess the way he says it sounds weird. It sticks out. It shouldn't stick out. It should like flow with the rest of the promo. Um, but I was fine with it. Dolph cut a great promo. Uh, you know, Braun just says words. But uh, yeah, I'm not, not too mad about it. It's LeBron Breaker. He's still, he still fresh. Words. What? <laughs> I'm gonna kick your ass. Why don't you get you got balls? We can do it tonight. You got them titty balls? Let me see them titty balls. balls. Yeah. Let balls. me see your real balls and your titty balls. Get in the ride. Uh calm, calm down, white boy. It's all right. It's <laughs> the all right. Man. Of it all. I'm on uh, I'm on Jack Double Mountain Dew. I'm on Rasp <laughs> Chip. 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 Uh, sticks. Stick your thoughts on bronze promo skills versus Dolph's promo skills. Oh, Jesus, God. Fucking Dolph buries him. I mean, is there yeah, any... You ain't got pinch of shovel. <laughs> I mean, is there any question? I mean, there, there, there's a reason why they bring Dolph and they're bringing people down to, to wrestle with them. It's I hope that he picks up stuff, the stuff on the on the fly training. And, I mean, Bron, LeBron Breaker's been doing pretty good, but he's got his promo skills are the, the, the downside of what he has. I mean, if he had halfway average uh, promo skills, he'd be a pretty good champion and ready to be brought up to the main roster right away. But that's what's going to hold him back for a little while. And you know Which what is Braun, wild. Which is wild because that's what they thought about Cesaro. But they never put the strap on. I was just going to mention that. I was just going to mention that Braun gets to fall back on Steiner math, whereas Cesaro yeah. gets to fall back on 
what his receding hairline he has nothing yeah. he's got nothing. nothing braun's got the steiner math cesaro mm-hmm. did not paul Heyman still regrets he never got cesaro over over when he had time with him he said i think he was just like just cut too thin because he was i think he was like writing shows and on the show and he said he his biggest regret is because he, he sees the work cesaro he, we all see the work cesaro does inside the rank and he says his biggest regret is that he never got Cesaro over enough because you know, Cesaro is a main eventer. He's a world champion. Uh, but yeah, Vince was just, I don't know, he just didn't want him to have the mic, which is weird because you let Sheamus come in and have the fucking title. Like- that's, the, that's the exact conversation me and my wife had a couple days ago. Cesaro should have been multiple time world champion, just like Sheamus is. Which yeah. kind of would have brought a lot more credibility to the bar. I mean, the bar were amazing. They were the ones who dethroned yeah. the New Day in their tag title reign. But I yep. mean, Cesaro, man, oh. It's, it's weird how we think of Cesaro as probably one of the best tag team specialists. I mean, he won it with, with Tyson. It, it just seemed right when he had a tag belt with somebody. And you're just like, kills it. Yep. Kills it as a tag team specialist. Um, it, it reminds me of Kofi. I mean, Kofi won the tag titles like what? Six times before New Day, you wanted to see him trash when he was young. He wanted with a bunch of people. I mean, it's our just truth, wild to I think. believe our truth is. Oh yeah, he wanted with our truth. He wanted with Kofi. He wanted with CM. He wanted with a bunch of people, and then you're just like, then he put him in the New Day, and then like they just took over with how funny they could. Be. Did he win it with Matt Seidel as well? Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Kofi is one. Yeah, yeah. He was he was like at least a four or five time tag team specialist before the New, New Day. Day. Yeah, yeah. And these were like lengthy runs. They weren't like quick runs. Like him and CM had it for a while. And that's why they're such good friends, though. Like they want CM wanted to do that. Well, big ups to Cesaro. Yeah. Uh Grayson Waller with, with Senga <laughs> versus L A Knight. Yeah. yeah, let me talk yeah. to you. Uh LA hangs up Waller's ballers on top rope and makes sure he ain't clapping Senga's cheeks tonight. Wrench it on that top rope. Haven't seen that spot in a while. Uh, commercial ah, picture ah. picture LA in control. Uh, Wade calls Waller a weasel. The crowd is actually split. Uh, LA counters Waller's running roll through stunner. Thanks to Sanga holding onto Waller's arm, LA falls on his face during the BFT finisher attempt. Waller with a handful of tights picks up the win. LA then fucking murders both of them after the match. But wait, both of them, some seven foot Indian guy, exactly. yeah. LA Knight. Well, first of all, LA Knight beat this crack in his debut match. And then, <laughs> man, send this cracker, send this, get him, get this hoe on a boat back and get him on a fucking 1 uh, 800 line for help desk or some shit back in Dirk and Dirk stand. Like customer get him the support. Fuck <laughs> but yeah, get him the fuck out of here. LA Knight not only whooped your ass in the rank. So crack an ass after the match, hit you with a finisher, some big seven foot, supposed to be security. You ain't securing shit, nigga. You said to secure a pizza in a fucking oven. All right? Get the fuck out of here. Now you're getting your ass whipped by L.A. Knight. Yeah, let me talk yeah. to you. Uh, sticks. Fucking Grayson versus L.A. Knight. I mean, Grayson got the win, but I mean, who really won here? L.A. Knight just murdered both of these guys. Uh, it was a good match. I mean, I, I fully expect we got we're gonna at least get one more, possibly probably at State of the Liver. But all in all, it wasn't that bad of a match. I mean, LA Knights, LA Knight stands out. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, the guys, the guy's good. So anytime we can get him on TV, and even in a loss, he shined. I mean, he sent fucking Sanji back on a fucking red eye with his red fucking dot back with some fucking curry back to go fucking learn how to wrestle again. Fuck out of here. Your passport ready, bitch. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, Walbutt finds the sleepy Chew. Apparently, Walbutt is talking to little Jimmy. <laughs> Chew addresses whatever it is. Uh, Cora and Straight Sonia continuing training. Uh, toxic lounge with toxic A. Uh, they make fun of all the Dusty Sniz competitors. Uh, Cesar, thoughts on Walbutt, sleepy Chew. Cora, straight Sonia training and the toxic lounge. Yeah, apparently, all but and the old sleepy bitch will team up. Not call no ho, no bitch, you know, no disrespect. Uh, they're gonna team up for the old dusty cup. Uh, and yeah, of course, of course, 
tall bitch is afraid of heights. Not, not a call. No ho, no bitch again. Uh, she afraid of heights? Yeah, I'd be afraid of heights too and white people shit. I'm, I'm afraid of all kinds of white people shit. She is, that bitch is Mexican, all right? She's got melanin in her skin. When you get melanin and you become darker, not by tanning, you white hoes. I know how you like to be tan all the time, look like you have color. You look like fucking vampire six days out of the week. But when you have melanin in your skin, you are afraid of doing white people shit. Because see, something about that pale white skin makes you crackers want to do crazy shit when you're sober. See, everybody likes doing dumb shit when they're drunk because they're drunk and they have no inhibitions. Only fine. But sober? Why am I going to swing down some fuckery when I'm sober? Bitch is six feet, 285, lifts to the left side of the performance center. Think she want to jump off some trees and shit? No, bitch. She wants to go lift weights. She likes to do shit on the ground where it's you know, nice and safe. I don't like to zip line down no fucking tall ass tree. The bitch is seven one. It's like she said the promo. You are height. What do you mean you're afraid of heights? Yeah, bitch. That's why you ain't never seen that bitch in no ladder match. She don't like climbing shit. She ain't crazy. She ain't Jeff Hardy. Hey, she gets nervous when she climbs bronze monster cock. That's how I'm afraid nervous. of height she is. <laughs> she probably don't. That's because she knows she's coming right back down. <laughs> Motherfucker's probably bending him over. Probably out there lifting cars and then they fucking him when it's upside down. <laughs> But yeah, that was fine. What was next after that? The Toxic Lounge. Yeah, Tom, Wade, Wade said, fuck this headset. I'm going up in the lounge. And then Vic got all pissed off. Yeah, he's like, you ain't going nowhere. Sit your bitch ass up. <laughs> Wade with the line of the night later. We will get to it, Caesar. Yeah. I hope, I hope you then, know what I'm talking and about. And then fucking, why, why, why Gigi wrestle the lingerie and then wears like army pants and shit? <laughs> like, just looking... Just look, not saying looking bummy, but she just looked comfortable. It was it was the time of the month, Cesar. She had to she had to cover it up, you know. Man, it's man, it's a time of the month for us to see that ass. That's what <laughs> that's what time is. Time to see that ass. You put that shit all over the gram, and you put that shit all over in the rang. I'm trying to see that ass when you're sitting down. Oh, by the way, uh, Mandy did invite uh, Mackenzie Mitchell to be the fourth member of Toxic Attraction uh, on Twitter. You guys did not see that. On the uh, Twitter. Yeah, and some fans were writing that Mackenzie Mitchell's hot enough to be in the group. And uh, Mandy said, sure, why not? Mackenzie actually tweeted her and Mandy said, sure, why not? And then Vic said, okay, wait, I'll join you. Let's go. Yeah. And then, what you? This bitch fucking sick, but he gotta have, he gotta have eight feet of dick. He probably got dick like the hard R's. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't personally see it. Hey, I'm not hating. Props to you, brother. Get your, your solid box. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what she sees in Sick Vic. It's got to be the oral. Got, it's got to be the oral. He could probably yeah. eat a taco better than straight Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> better than Ray Mysterio? <laughs> better than gay Sonia. No. <laughs> <laughs> that man knows where it is. <laughs> got to. It's got to be something. He either got Because we all know they're getting paid. We all know what they checks are looking like. They, they all got money. She's on TV. She got money, too. Yeah, that motherfucker got to that motherfucker got to eat that box like a three year old kid in the sand bit on recess or some shit. Or right. he gotta have six feet of dick like a hard on. He gotta have some porn star wang, some you know coke can size thick dick <laughs> slang up in that jig. Uh sticks. <laughs> I know we've seen we we already didn't know the result, but uh, Walbutt finding Sleepy Two. They're both talking to little Jimmy. Apparently, uh, thoughts on that. Uh, I'm interested to see how they're going to do as a tag team. Uh, this possibly could be leading to stand and deliver for those two. Uh, what did you think of Cora and Straight Sonia? I mean, we can't say it better than what Cesar just said, but your thoughts? No, no, no. Cesar, Cesar coined it perfectly. We can keep going. The Toxic Lounge. How much would you pay to spend a, uh, an evening or even an hour in that Toxic Lounge? I would sign over my 401k, both my kidneys and my fucking liver to spend I'll tell like you what I would do. in a goddamn toxic lounge. I would kill CM Punk on live television <laughs> just to lick the seat after you, they you, left you, the you toxic lounge. Garbage, you'd be a toxic lounge. Knowing, knowing that Cesar Andrew. is going to be put to death in jail, he would yes. still murder CM Punk on live TV just for that opportunity. Just to lick the and seat. Sean could write a story about how we break him out. <laughs> Damn right. Yeah, hey, Walla is bulletproof. 
Yeah. Well, the, I didn't have the Impala back then. <laughs> uh, the Dusty Sniz kicks off the first round. It's KLR versus – oh, KLR and Io Shirai versus Lash Legend and Amari Miller. The Lash Legend is a big bitch. I did not know. Big old bitch. She wins. <laughs> Uh, she might, Io, be, she might Io, be bigger than Jay Cargill. You know I love Io. She did botch a, a jump attempt off the top <laughs> row, but quickly recovers and changes up like a pro. Wade picks Indian Persia to win the Dusty Sniz tournament. As I, I was typing it. that, Io wins with the over the moonsault. Uh, Dante Chin, that's what that fucker's name was. Dante <laughs> Chin was interviewed. Uh, says Duke won't have the legs to sweep Persia off of her feet. Not because of anything Dante does, but because thick Persia, but because Persia's thighs will break them. They're uh, right. Dante, thick bitch. Dante yeah. preparing to deliver emotional damage. Well, damage. Uh, <laughs> uh, sticks. What do you think of the first round? Dusty Sniz. I didn't take much notes because as I was typing, the fucking match ended. What did you think of this? Uh, it was a good win for KLR and Neo. That's all I gotta say about that. Uh, Dante Chin. After he was done with his algebra test, he came and did an interview, says, you know, Duke won't have the legs of sweet Persia off her feet, but Cesar already knows Persia's thighs broke the man. Uh, thoughts on Dante, Dante Chen and Duke? Fucking Dante must, must watch, or somebody must watch the fucking the tripod and listen to Cesar, because that fucking dude ain't that good, ain't that smart. He's so buried in goddamn books to know that fucking shit, so he must have Somebody must have told him to say that. He knew thick bitches give you no legs. No legs. Uh, Cesar, the Dusty Sniz, first round, KLR and EO versus the female hard R's. What did you think of this match? Yeah, the, the disrespect to have these, to have the female hard R's get smoked like this in like four minutes and 18 seconds. On I Black mean, History Month. No. In Black History Month. It is still Black History Month until tomorrow and you had these hoes these hoes got beat so quick john moxley was still outside the ring from the ddt while cm punk was getting hit in the head with a steel bell and then dropped on his head with the brain buster <laughs> the whole time bro. if you go back and watch that match tell me how long john moxley is outside the ring in that time frame Literally, <laughs> literally, see your punk got hit in the head with a steel bell and dropped on his fucking head and still fought off one of the best tag teams in the world. And all that time while these four bitches were fighting, and these hoes lost that quick. I swear to crack. Go back there and watch it. I watch hope it. Brett's watch it. keeping up on season. <laughs> Is that becoming a weekly thing? That's fucking hilarious. I would talk about that shit till I fucking die. <laughs> I ain't never letting that shit go. All right? He's going to be saying that shit on his deathbed. That's like, going to be on my fucking tombstone. Longer than I am here on life support. This is some yeah, fuck. fucking, that shit's going to be on my tombstone. I may be dead, but ain't nothing going to say. John Moxley was down for three minutes. I'm going to get a cameo from John Moxley. No. Uh, I'll David. pay for it. I'll pay. <laughs> Sign it up. Sign it up. I'll, I'll fucking... I'm going to run that Venmo to you real quick. <laughs> Cesar, Dante Chin. Of course, he, he he don't know what he's talking about. He don't know what he's talking about. You don't Dude. know. Dude. This, this motherfucker's got, trying to get this motherfucker's probably trying to get his doctorate in Asian arithmetic or some fuck shit. And he out here trying to talk about some, some pool. Tech. Nah, you don't know about these thick chicks giving you no legs. You go to the rag. See? See, Ruby found out the hard way when she was fucking that rock guy in, in the VIP, like Sticks called it that one night, and she had no legs to fight off of uh, Malaru. Then you got the Jig Persia, man. I mean, she she thick girl, bro. You gotta you gotta mess with that. I see see what Duke did. Duke was listening. We're gonna get to it later, because it's later in the show, but it's after his match, because Duke Duke was listening. He said, Hey man, I heard about this place called the Big Brush Cantina, and some motherfucker named Cesar be talking. How to sexy time these ladies. And I heard he's on this show, talks about our show. Duke was, I know Duke's one of the new subscribers. It's a ghost page, like Kevin Durant on Twitter. I knew it. It's a, it's a ghost, it's a ghost subscriber. I ain't mad at Duke. Hey, Duke, I'm here for you, bro. I'm Big up to Duke. Yeah, your poker gimmick was trash, and you know that. That's why you got a new one. 
Hey man, you gotta get them. Hey, treat them thick bitches right. Thick bitches need love too, dude. Not call no whole no bitch, but thick bitches need love too. But it's after the match. You can't be humping them the day before. You can't hump this girl on Monday. You can only hump this girl Wednesday through Sunday. Yes. You can't hump on Monday. Mondays is off limit. And if you got pay per view on Sunday, Saturdays is now off limits. You go hump on Sunday night. Yeah, all day because you ain't gonna have no legs. You ain't gonna have no legs. You gonna your knees gonna be blowed out worse than that thick neck cracker with tattoos called Brody. In AEW, your shit's gonna be gone in six months. They're gonna have no legs. Up, up next, uh, this was a segment that would not die. Uh, mm -hmm. BJ making a dating vid for an app. Oh, that was a waste of fucking. Oh god. Anyway, um, Vic calls Wade the original Tindler, tin, Tinder swindler. Swindler. Say that three go. times fast. Uh, Dante. I still gotta watch that. I heard that shit is good. Entrance. Uh, Dante Chen versus Duke Hudson. They love to mention that Dante is from Singapore. You have to say it at least three times minimum. Amen. And Amen. Every Got you. Uh, Dante, very aggressive. Duke makes quick work of him, though, <laughs> with a launching razor's edge for the win. Wow. It's probably because those BJ segments kept taking too fucking so much time. They, they had were to be like, so... you know what, Dante? Dante, you're done in two minutes. Two minutes, that's it. Yeah. They longer, so long, longer so than when John Moxley was knocked out. Knocked, knocked outside the ring while CM Punk got hit in the head with a steel bell. Cesar, uh, did, did you even watch? Did you fast forward through this? I mean, Dante versus Duke. I mean, we knew. Well, here's what happened: the Singapore man. So, so I was watching this. I was watching, yeah, Briggs and uh, the two crackers. Watching the two crackers who were supposed to be bar fighters, but they never drank. So <laughs> that already, you know. Irritated me. Then this cracker was talking about that. I, I, I still don't get. I mean, he can't even talk, but he trying to get trying to get him some black meat. He trying to get him, he trying to cross the street to get some of that sweet meat. It ain't like he trying to hunt Casey. Casey might go for his dude, stupid nerd ass, but she gonna twist that nigga all up. But you can't you can't fuck no girl like him. You see the way that girl bend and stuff. Can't handle no crazy. She if she's half as crazy, I see why Ricochet stayed with him so long. I got that good shit on it. But he can't go across the street trying to get that sweet meat. He ain't got no rap. Boy, boy ain't got no rap. So I don't know how long they're going to keep this trash rolling. So I fast forwarded through this. Yeah, of course. As soon I as they put up the camera, and as soon as he was like, say something dumb, I was like, yeah, I'm dumb. So then, yeah, I saw Dante Cracker uh, <laughs> trying to beat up Duke on the outside. And I was like, oh, shit, we got a match. Hold on. So then I'm looking in my fridge. You know what I'm saying? I, I had a little butt meat uh, TikTok pause. So I was waiting for a commercial, you know. And I'm trying to decide which beer I want to drink while I watch this fuckery going on. And next thing I know, the match was over. I didn't even pick the beer on the fridge. <laughs> I missed the whole thing. This shit was, was like 38 seconds long. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, I don't know what happened. But apparently Duke won. He whooped his crack ass. I mean, just smoked him. I don't know why this guy has longer promos than his matches. It's like like the last three times. Oh, fuck it. It's, fuck it. it's like he, he he talks and talk, but he don't walk the walk. He talked about his dead dad longer than this match lasted. Hey, I mean, I mean, I mean, shit. Probably took longer for the niggas to put that motherfucker in the dirt and throw the dirt on him, shovel it back on him, than he lasted in this match. By the way, Natalia's dad passed away. I don't know if you guys. Uh, know. I think he's still gone. I think he's still gone. I don't know if you guys. Know. I know a street artist put uh, put a picture of him on the table one time. Um, <laughs> shout out to that guy. Good work. Good work, man. Big ups. Big ups. And R.I.P. Stallion Pete. Stallion Pete. You know it. Uh, Sticks. Uh, after Wheeler Yuta and Dante Chen traded calculus notes, uh, this match happened. Uh, thoughts on this? Dante Chin took more time doing Asian ACT test than he did in this fucking match. So that's all I'm going to say Christ. about that. Jesus Christ. The, the BJ fucking dating app vids will come up again. So I'll get your thoughts okay. on that uh, coming up, Sticks. Uh, trick and Mellow out. It's a Mellow Mellowbration. With no uh, shirts. Mellow stole the show. Call the cops. I'm sorry, brother. Didn't mean to say that. You're a black history month, you stupid bitch. <laughs> 
Uh, out comes the bruiser way challenges mellow for next week. Mellow accepts match with Skeet Dunn. <laughs> Man, I, I, almost gave, I gotta give it to. to so I almost I, gave it to the chat was, when I saw him say ski. Fucking hilarious. I was like, hold on, who's watching NXT? I just need to know if y'all heard that motherfucker say ski. Uh, Cameron Grimes out of nowhere attacks Mellow and Trick from behind. This leads to a very rare singles match for Trick. He took his shirt off, Cesar. Uh, he ain't but- never got no shirt off. What are you talking about? He took his jacket off. Yeah, <laughs> fucking Versus- jacket with no shirt. Versus a freshly shaved chest, Cameron Grimes. Yeah, no chili meat. Grimes, <laughs> he, he wins with the cave in, of course. Uh, eh, Sloppy as eh, shit eh, as ever. Obvious. Sloppy as uh, shit as ever. Sticks, what'd you think of the mellow uh, The match, uh, bare chested Cameron Grimes, uh, skeet done. I mean, this is this is pretty entertaining for for about the ten minutes that passed. Mellow, Mellow on the mic is good. I mean, they he's good and going to be great when he starts becoming – they put him up with that main event picture with the the double-A championship. And <laughs> these guys coming out and just fucking letter, letterman jack. And I hear Cesar in my head, everybody, they come out like, these guys ain't got no goddamn shirts on. <laughs> I hear that every time. I just Reached start up. laughing. Greased up. up. That nigga is baby old in a letterman jacket. Baby old up in a letterman jacket. Who is cleaning the inside of that jacket? You got to go get that dry cleaning. They're pissed. They're pissed. (laughs) That's who. Nobody's got to pay for that dry cleaning. But, I mean, we see why Trick doesn't wrestle very often. And Cameron Grimes got to work on his cavens because he's had a couple of a really sloppy cavens the last couple matches he's had. So, but yeah. Trick, we we saw Trick wrestle, so we know he can sort of wrestle. Needs to work on that. Camera guy's got to win. I'm good. Cesar, they said Skeet done on TV. I fucking, I fucking almost threw my remote across the fucking room. Skeet uh, done. He said, he said, well, I ain't Skeet done. I said, hold the fucking phone. I rewound it twice because i have been drinking. Cesar put Tick Thought down. He's like, hold on a second. Yeah, yeah no, no. When the eight champions out, Tick Tick Thought is not around. <laughs> I listen to the eight champion because it's still Black History Month. Respect. Uh, so I put the phone down. I was like, eight champion. I was like, yeah, I got to hear this man talk his talk. Talk your talk. Talk your talk. Yeah. And then, uh, then first of all, when they came out, I was like, I, I'm going to tell you the whole thoughts in my head. You know, so they came out, and I was like, I know these two niggas ain't out here baby old up with Letterman jackets on with no shirts. No fucking shirts. I was like, in my head for like at least 38 seconds when I got into the ring, I was like, who is cleaning the inside of that jacket? Because even if you put a shirt on, when you leave the arena, there's baby oil on the inside of that Leatherman jacket. I was like, who's paying for that? Is that your Leatherman jacket? If it's my Letterman jacket, I'm not putting on baby oil and walking out to the ring. Because I got to take it home, then it's going to smell like baby oil. So I got to get on the phone with Orlando Laundry Service. service. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I need I'm dropping that shit off. Who's in charge? Who's in yeah. charge? No, fuck that. I'm dropping that shit off in the back of the fashion department. Hey, uh, give me a Letterman. Uh, Dude, he's, he's, there, he's asking fucking Grayson Waller's security guard how to get that shit out of the fucking... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got an uncle. He got an uncle that holds a dry cleaning yeah. business. <laughs> but man, when that host said, when that host said Skeet Dunn, first of all, I was waiting for him to say, uh, rest in piss, Cameron Grimes. If he'd have said that and Skeet Dunn, I'd have fucking lost it. This has been the promo of the year. I would have fucking lost it. Yeah, this motherfucker had the nerve. Just, I stole the show. Call the cops. I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, the, the 5 0, the one time, I was like, he talking about calling the one time. I'm sorry, brother. Yeah, we don't mess with police. I was like, you can't say that with all these white people in the crowd. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, no, wait, you in Florida. So, yeah, you call Florida man. You don't call the police. You call Florida man. That nigga fix all your problems because he's crazy. Uh, but no, I think Mello versus uh, Oski is going to be uh, gonna be good. Good. And then, oh, yeah, oh, uh, old Cameron Grimey shaved 50 pounds of chili meat off, so he was faster in the ring. 
more aerodynamic. Uh, yeah, he took it to old Trent. I like Wade. He's like, he, he, he's not even dressed. He's got on. He's got on church shoes for Christ's sake. And I was like, then I started looking. And I was like, oh, shit, the nigga does have on church shoes. <laughs> Is he not dressed to have a match? Like, why would he at least like? If you're gonna set it up that way, why not come out? Cause you ain't wearing no shirt anyway, and just like some wrestling boots or like some some take sneakers. The shoes, take the shoes off. Take yeah, or, or just have off. just have sneakers. Have come out in sneakers. It would have been fine. You wearing Letterman jackets. Come out in sneakers. Don't come out in church shoes. Come out in sneakers, so that you can have a grip in the ring and still wrestle around. Doesn't matter if you're gonna win or lose. Just like <clears throat> you know, you're gonna have that match. Like what is what are you doing? I was like, this thing really is in church shoes. Some shits cannot grip in that ring. He's going to slide everywhere. I was waiting for him to have like a slide. Like, remember, uh, remember how the rock hit the, the rock, yeah. elbow on uh, British Bulldog? And I'm going to slid across the ring in church shoes. I was hoping <laughs> Trick would have some fuck shit like that. But he didn't because he's weak day with his, with his weak sauce having ass. Uh, but no, it was a good match. Cameron Grimes, I guess, gets a win back on the both of them. Because uh, he did hit a cave in on Trick at the match and then gets a pin over Trick. So win, loss, trade 50 50, but didn't get the belt. Uh, well, but I mean, like to me, I'm not mad because that match could have went either way. And like I said, I picked it for my beer cheese just because I didn't know who's going to win. And that was the entertaining part for me. Well, I mean, uh, and you know, you can see the writing on the wall. It's either going to be Pete Dunn versus Cameron Grimes, winner moves on. Yeah, or a triple a threat. Or a triple threat at Stand and Deliver, which would be... Which good, which would probably be better. Let's be honest. Or, man, you can go fatal four-way with L.A. Knight. Yeah. yeah. Let yeah. me talk to you. Let me talk to you. <laughs> that would be good as well. Uh, Sticks, well, let me just get this off the bat right now because we have the second... <sighs> BJ dating video bullshit. Let me just get your thoughts on this now. What, what did you think of this shit? The second I took segment, a piss. He still, I took a piss. I literally yeah. took a piss. You might as well, man. This is um this this, this was this is something that they should have put on AEW Dark just to do a favor. <laughs> this fucking shit, man. This co- I think it'll put this shit on <laughs> picture picture commercial. Yeah. For fuck's sake. <laughs> Crash off dark. <laughs> WWE, they gotta, they gotta fucking re, they gotta before they air this on on USA, they gotta go through this watches and be like, yeah, fuck, hey, hey, N- hey, Nick Khan, call you, call Tony and say, hey, we got we got a fucking video tape for you. Tell him just to put it straight on fucking dark and dark elevation. You can split it up and just put it there and hope that nobody sees it and hope it just goes there to fucking die. Well, they don't have to hope it wasn't seen. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, we can skip past that shit. Champa working out. Braun gonna watch his match. Champa wants Goldie back. Uh, Chase U, intestinal fortitude, uh, gives a teachable moment to a student questioning what he'll do to White Collie. And then, gentlemen, I don't give a fuck. I, you know, I don't care about that because no, no, he said motherfucker had no balls. Yeah, uh, it's because titty balls. It's the debuting. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, Lord. I'm getting the vapors. I'm getting the vapors. It's my new. This motherfucker wore no pants for this whole next segment. You wore no pants. New. I I don't have no pants on. No pants. No (laughs) pants. Nikita Lyons debuts looking like a thick ass Sonya Blade. The sad part is, this is her second match. Yeah, because of the, um, what was it? 205? So no, well, she actually wrestled on NXT like a month ago. Oh, she did? Yeah. Because that's when I saw her, and that's when I told you guys about her, and I sent you the Instagram post. Uh versus Kayla Inlay. You don't have to remember that name. No, uh, nope. Lions with the sick trouble in paradise, followed by a splits ass buried in chest. Woo! Boy, those are the only notes because I, I didn't give it. I was just like, okay. Okay. Girl. Mm. Oh, Jesus shit. Girl. Jesus Christ. Hey, okay. I love it. I love it. The song, song, you know, it was all right. But, you know, the, the outfit, the, the look. Uh, the, oh, good Lord. Um, sorry. Sticks, your thoughts on the debuting Nikita Lions? 
I'm just going to say two things. One, we're, we're talk actual in wrestling. Her striking was real was pretty good. She we should have been straight. Yeah, she can strike. And two, I hope that splits is the finishing move that she does when she pins her opponents. That's all I got to say. Big bitch can pin me like that all day. Oh, Lord. Lord have mercy. Yeah, that Woo. bitch, she's, she, she's our, on a serious note. She seems kind of like a complete fucking package here. You know, even Vince probably uh, whacked it to this chick a couple times. I would have. Um, no shame. No shame. Well, technically not the debuting, but what did you think of Nikita Lyons wrestling on NXT? Another reason why I would murder CM Punk live on TV just to have her pin me oh like God. that, like she pinned that bitch. Oh, Lord. I, I, you got to feed her two plan Bs. Two plan Bs. Because I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, boy, if I got to crawl up in that for a little bit, I'm dumping a gallon of ski, black ski in her soul. <laughs> and two more would go long, would last longer than CM Punk outside I'll of the ring. I love John Moxley outside <laughs> of the ring. Oh my God. He got DDT'd on the concrete pad. While CM Punk got hit in the head with a steel bell and then got brain busted, still fall, kicked out in two, and still fought off one of the she's greatest our, tag teams in the world. She's our, she would need the plan B buffet. Let's let's just be honest. I'd give it to her. I'd be at, C, I'd be at CBS buying it out. Let me, let me get your plan B. How you just to what? No, B, let me get let me get B, your plan B. B. I uh, sign over I sign over my next check from work just to CVS. Let me get the plan B. <laughs> You're gonna alone. rename it the plan Nikita. No. Um Duke. I'm gonna call, it's gonna be called the plan C for Cesar because I'm <laughs> slanging him. <laughs> get him out. Um, we finally get what has been building for a few weeks here. Duke makes out with Persia. Indy says, gross. Duke says, you used to like it. Indy, that was a long time ago. Duke says, doesn't have to be. When all along, the god of goats heard it all. The disrespect to the god. Oh, it's see not that. Disres- well, it's kind of disrespect, but See, gonna, this misunderstanding could lead up to the breakup of Index. Beth is spinning we'll, in we'll, her we'll, grave, Cesar. <laughs> what did Beth, you will come, Beth will come back to NXT for counseling if these <laughs> motherfuckers end up on the rock. First of all, everybody's got a pass. Everybody's got a pass, yeah. I, we all know these tricks out here ain't got no kind of common sense. I'm sorry if you're listening to tricks. Y'all be picking some shitty-ass dudes to hook up with. Let's let's honestly be honest. Let's be honest. Let's honestly That's, be honest. Yeah, y'all y'all don't have the best taste in men. You know how I know that? Because y'all have hooked up with me before, and I am not a great dude to hook up with. Because I'm a piece of shit. I'm just gonna be honest with you. All right, any any chick any chick who's got it from your boy, you fucked up. Let, let's just be honest. He sends his condolences. I do. I do. Secondly, secondly. Like I said, everybody's got everybody's got a regret. You know what I'm saying? Even even dudes out here, man. I sh- I, sh- I shouldn't have hit that last night. I should not. You got to take that with you, man. We all adults here. We out here in these streets, you know, doing work, doing dirt, trying to find the love of your life, or just trying to be ignorant as shit. That's me. Uh, you know, the God knows that. It may have hurt to hear it out loud because you don't want to know who your girl was getting piped by before. You know, why you wifed her. That they, they married. Piece of paper. Divorce. 50%. She can take half his check. You know what I'm saying? For Vince. But, you know, you don't want to know who your girl was getting piped by. You know what I'm saying? Because that's like, you know, that nigga was hitting you off every Saturday like I used to hit you every Saturday. I got it. Less history, more mystery. There we go. That's it. Put that shit on a shirt. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, don't nobody need to know all that shit, man. Your past is your past. I'm the present. I'm the future. That's what the God is. So she's with the God now. So she had to she had to deal with little fuck boys like Dookie, you know, playing his poker, you know, rolling his chips, you know, probably had to get his titty balls played with when he had a bad night and uh he, he needed some money when he was, you know, building his way up to be a poker legend. But she went to God. Had to get his dice rolled. Yeah, he had to get his dice rolled a couple times by Jake or something to lend him some money because he works for his father. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's fine. You know, you had to do that. She had to get through that to realize that she didn't need that kind of man in her life. She needed someone like the God. And that's why he's the God. Man, ain't heard a say that. Man probably had said eight words of this woman in his life. She stuck forever. Man had the toolie in the coat ready for anybody to object. Had the toolie in the coat on live TV. He was like, I will cut you bitches if you say something. I read his eyes. That's what I heard. I heard, damn, that nigga about to cut 38 people. About to cut 38 people because 38 hands were raised. Not Johnny, though. Johnny knew what time it was. Johnny accepted him. Big, big, no shout out, Johnny. All right, Pete. So you get a new contract. Stallion Pete. Stallion Pete. Always Stallion Pete. I'm sorry, I forgot. Always Stallion Pete. Not Stallion Skeet. That'd be a better day. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a better day. Nice. Uh, sticks. I mean, we got the, the rift that could prevent Indian Persia from winning the Dusty Snares. Uh, the God. A little perturbed. Uh, what, what did you think of this episode? I mean, uh, segment. Only thing Dexter had you. Episode. The only thing Dexter had you was point to that hand, to that ready, wedding ring that Indy shows us every time she comes out to that ring. That's all he had to do. That and probably look at at fucking Duke and go. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's gonna be an interesting match, by the way. Duke mm-hmm. versus the Gorg. Uh Robert Stone does white collies talking for him, thankfully. Uh Creed <laughs> Brothers and Must See Malcolm, who was shouted out by Rise Hendrix, our intro from last week. Uh out celebrating the Dusty Cup. Diamond is the real deal. Imperium, you're just a bunch of coleslaw eating. Wiener schnitzel. Imperium interrupt with Gunna. <laughs> Kept calling him Gunna. Gunna. <laughs> uh, brawl ensues, leaving Gunna. And Malcolm, uh, he goes after him, but Hawaiian 50 cent for the save, Caesar. Uh, what I tell you? What I tell you? We get a Jensen segment again, but no one cares. Well, we don't care about that. We don't no. care about that fuck shit. We ain't going to talk about them dumbass hoes. See, what I tell you? What did you think of, uh, I mean, must see Malcolm. Well, we just got spoiled this week, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, was, it was an excellent week. And, I'm, and I'm not Malcolm. even going to talk about Malcolm first. I'm going to talk about what y'all said last week. When Uh-oh. you said Solo Sequoia calling out a uh, gunner. He's about to get murdered. We see what happens when a real <laughs> nigga gets in the rang with this <laughs> cracker named Gunner. Ooh, you see that Hawaiian? A nigga get in the ring with Gunner. You see what that nigga, the street, cha- my, my street champion, <laughs> Solo Sokoa, came in there. Oops, he came in there and said, Get your big cracker wiener snitzel ass. Ow! Kick that nigga so hard. His, dead op- his dentist woke up. Said, I got work to do. Oh shit. I got some, I got some business coming in. I got to get ready. The street nigga Solo Sokol came out there ready to fuck your It's couch a shame up. that Dennis was white. It's a shame that Dennis was white. Dang, you know he was a white Jewy ass cracker. It's probably some shit like that. Probably with like 18 letters in his last name. <laughs> <laughs> All consonants. <laughs> Three vowels with 18 letters in that. It's no, 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 no. ski. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking John, fucking John Kolonsky. <laughs> that cracker woke up. He woke up at a he woke up at nine nine p.m. on a Tuesday after a hard day of dentistry. It was like, I gotta work on some cracker named Gunner. He heard that super kick in his wallet. <laughs> he fucking counted the pennies in his account. Coming in, the street nigga Solo Sokoa feels nobody. He don't feel nobody on that. His heart don't pump Kool Aid. Real, <laughs> real. You probably got you probably got eight feet of dick and thirty pound balls. <laughs> he ain't afraid of nobody. Stepped in that ring and kicked that big cracker right in. The, he ducked the chops. So he knew he was gonna go for the chop. That's all. That's all Gunner got is that chop. Went in there, kicked that motherfucker in his teeth. You know, three three fans got a got a tooth each. That cracker, but well, he's dead in the ring. He, he was laid out. He was laid out like John Moxley was laid out. I'm not going to go with that. He was, he was laid out. Just because the street nigga 
is out here and he's real. He's I told y'all that motherfucker don't pump Kool Aid. And he then, don't give Gunner a good fight. And then Musty Malcolm. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Because Musty Malcolm was like, damn, I should have known. I surrounded myself by these crackers that I would need a real hood nigga to back me up in the ring when I talk shit about Malcolm. You see, these crackers ain't about nothing. They just want to fight on some white boy shit and they leave me by myself. But the street nigga, Solo Zakoa, came out to save your black ass, Malcolm, because it's still Black Hittery Month. <laughs> and he knew. He knew. Now, come March, your dumb ass is on your own. I don't know what to tell you. But, hey, he had your back that night. Stick. Cheers. Cheers, street champion. My street champion. Stick. Solo Zakoa. It's the, the celebration. Must see Malcolm the Creed Bros. Of course, Imperium. Shitting all over it, but uh, Hawaiian 50 Cent for the save. I mean, what did you think of this segment? This, uh, like I said, we got spoiled this week with so many great segments and wrestling, and there was no wrestling, it was just fighting. Uh, was it, you- was all, it was either fighting or promos <laughs> on both shows, and it was great. I was sports entertained Tuesday and Wednesday, thoroughly, 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 thoroughly sports entertained. I think the wrestling was the worst part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sticks, your thoughts? Uh, I was sports entertained. I mean, I, Hawaiian 50 Cent. I, I want I want Malcolm so bad. I want we get a couple of, of weeks of, of Malcolm trying to get him in the diamond mine. I really hope we get that. Oh, yeah, I hope Malcolm just comes out during the match. He's, like, hyping him up. Fucking, if we get, if we get Malcolm Heyman <laughs> trying to get him into fucking – Diamond Mine, that would be that would be so good. But all in all, it was good. I was sports entertained. Oh man. Uh Gacy and Harlan still trying to add some fudge to the fudget club, hassling Draco. Uh Dusty Sniz round match, round one match again. It's Ivy Nile, who maybe the Hawaiian Fizzy Scent might get a hold of who could lure him into the diamond mine. But that's long a- snaps. I feel I feel bad for that mattress. <laughs> <laughs> in that box spring and that uh, headboard. I feel back for that Ivy, headboard. Ivy Nile and Paxley versus Casey and Caden. Uh, Vic getting mad at Wade because he wants to go to the toxic lounge like Cesar alluded to earlier. Uh, Wade said to subscribe to women's only fans to get their attention. That was the line of the week. Wade Barrett is the fucking goat of commentary for the entire decade. That dude only gets better and better. How did, how did Vince U- Uka, just let him? Uka buka to you, sir. Yeah, how did he get away with saying subscribe to wrestling <laughs> women's only? He started fans. out saying, you go, you go and you like their Instagram posts, or if they have the only fans, fans. their only fans. Oi. I was like, this thing is said only fans. He said only fans on live TV and said, Go subscribe. You know what? He said go subscribe. That means give them money. So, hey, Uka Booga to my top. He's giving Pat McAfee. Nah, Pat McAfee's trying to give him a run for the money because Wade's always the Wade's always the Wade. Wade was there first. Wade was Wade there. Was there for, I, Wade hit it first. Wade yeah. hit it first. He's like, Ray J, salute to you, Wade. <laughs> salute like to Ray you, Ray. Wade. <laughs> uh, Sticks, we didn't get an Uka Booga from you, sir. Uka Booga. Thank you very much. Uh, after a 450 Russian leg sweep combo, Casey and Caden advance. I do appreciate how much work they put into their entrance, by the way. Uh, mm-hmm. Ivy murders Paxley for losing. Uh, Roddy was out there, by the way, for uh, Ivy and, and and Paxley. Sticks, what did you think of this Dusty Sniz? Uh, round one match, uh, if you don't have any thoughts on Gacy and Harlan stalking Draco still. I nah, hope I'm in the gym. I've seen it. Dusty Snooze, I'm, I'm good with the with the knockoff budget club. I'm good. <laughs> so yeah, the tag. Was tag yeah, match? the Dusty Snooze match. Any thoughts? Um, I I mean I got to add a feeling Ivy Nile and Paxley weren't gonna were gonna win. I mean uh, obviously Ivy Nile is probably gonna be a, a shining uh, single star if they have her go. But uh, Caden and Casey, the, some of their fucking ring moves. I mean, I had a feel. I, I you, they're they're a good to women's tag team. Now we're getting fucking rave, emo, emo rave, Casey mm-hmm. King. I'll watch D- it. Dressing alike too. Yeah. They fucking right. They fucking right. 
Cesar, <laughs> Ivy, and Baxley are the hard R's of uh, the Wonkies, the Crackers. They're the Ritz. <laughs> the fucking the hard R's, R's of women. Oh, sorry, I'm drinking. Yeah, the um, salt Ritz, Ritz is. Yeah, the salt, the saltines. <laughs> What's a cracker company? Uh, I can't think of it. Uh, uh, yeah, salt salt there's uh, Nabisco. So- Nabisco, yeah, yeah they're, they're the Nabiscos, yeah, because they're like golden tan, <laughs> they're, fucking, they're white still, but they're like butter, yeah, they're, they're the Nabiscos. I mean, it was it was a quick match, what can I, Cesar, did you give us thoughts on this shit? No, uh, just, yeah, it was weird that Roddy was there, not Musty Malcolm, yeah, uh, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, now beat the brakes out of that hoe, because it's funny, because Musty Malcolm, Posted on his Twitter with them, it said one big happy family, and you could and Ivy now was just looking pissed. Yeah, she's with this bitch. Not you know once again not to call no uh, but uh yeah Roddy was out there. She whooped her monkey ass, and then Roddy's like, I, I think she learned her lesson. It, it, and yeah. then and then what she did? Then she like picked the bitch up and carry her backstage. Yeah, with all with all that body. How you gonna, yeah. how you gonna beat a bitch down? Well, beat a bitch down, and you got enough body just to pick her up and then carry her to the back. She, I mean, now, I mean, now might be too strong. She might be too strong. Uh, solo in her, excuse me, Hawaiian 50 Cent interviewed about the gunner match. Uh, Malcolm said he had a he had Gunther right where he wanted him, but you got the juice, Oos. He holds up his <laughs> hand for the high five. Uh, solo leaves him hanging. Uh, LA Knight. Yeah. yeah, he's yeah. pissed, but he took out both Waller and Sanga. Yeah, uh, they, they announced all the matches for, for next week. Uh, gentlemen, th- this was good. I, this is only four lines here about Musty Malcolm going for a high five, and it's still more entertaining than when John Moxley. No, I was kidding. Uh, C- <laughs> Cesar uh, Musty Malcolm approaching. Yeah. Uh, Hawaiian 50 Cent. 50 cent. Uh, Yo, just, man, and Fiddy, Fiddy was deli- there. They delivered. Fiddy was there giving his interview. Malcolm, must see Malcolm comes up. You know, MS, MSM. He <laughs> brought up. Not to be confused with the MCM because he's a Mitch. Uh, but MSM, MSM rolls up. He, he comes in there. Yeah, he's talking yeah. about you again. No. Yeah, yeah. You call, it, you call that cracker <laughs> twice. All right. Yeah, <laughs> he, uh, he rolls up. No. <laughs> he rolls up and, uh, and uh, he, he was like, "Hey man, I didn't want to. You got the juice. You got the juice, Oos." And he was like, "Do that shit for you, <laughs> punk motherfucker, <laughs> the fucking street nigga, the champ." He's like, "I'd kick that crack in his neck eight days a week." And that, that's what he said after when they were on YouTube. Mackenzie Mitchell was talking. It was a uh, sling, I, you know, sling cut. Yeah, out. sling, sling TV. Sorry. Though, yeah, Sorry. you gotta get on YouTube and watch some of his extras, Sorry. man. Sorry, you gotta watch the extras. They post I, all these. I extras didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the street, the street champion Fitty, Wine Fitty, H H Fitty, as I like to call him. You know, H Fitty, the street nigga. I he hope like, he's uh, in 2K22, man. I hope <laughs> he's in 2K22. He is joining the fuck it club. <laughs> We gonna talk about that off camera. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, but, uh, oh, yeah, man. I like the way he said it. Like he just rolled up and he was like, Malcolm was talking. He's like looking at him. Well, it's funny. I was gonna use phrase looking at him like he's short and Malcolm is short. But he was just like, do that shit for you. <laughs> fuck out of here. Get the fuck out my face. He's like, put uh, your hand down, Carlton. Get the yeah, hell yeah. out of here. I'm not dapping you up on live TV. I don't want nobody to know I'm associated. You hang out with crackers. Out of here, Black Hittery Month. <laughs> you out here with all these white folks. Uh, but no, it's funny as shit. And I thought that was funny. That cracked me up. The way you said it, it cracked me up. Um, so I mean, if, if they're really behind this dude, I mean, looks like they're throwing him with Gunther, Walter, whatever you want to call, who we like know Gunner. can have Gunner. No. A 10 <laughs> Gunner, who we know can have a, a fucking beer cheese match. Any Tuesday that man desires with anybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, like we said, like I mean, Walter's only Walter's fought like who? Like he's fought Tyler Bate, Pete Dunn, Dragon Off, Dragon Off. Like he went on that reign. If you watch NXT UK, nobody's as big as him. 
and for how big he is to like sell it so good enough that he is you're literally like this small motherfucker's got every bit of chance to beat this guy and the fact that he it, I mean, it's, it's crazy because I heard the phrase don't learn to sell too well because that's all you do and that that really reminds me of Dolph I was just going to say that yeah, I was gonna say that speaking really, of that, the main event has Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, that really reminds me of Dolph when Dolph oversells too well. But the fact that like Gunner sold that super kick for a long time for somebody who's new, and when you're an ex champ, you have to you have to really be like, yo, he's an ex champ. You have to respect him. He's fucking strong. He can take a hit. He can keep going. And the fact that Solo maybe has a great bloodline of people in front of him doesn't mean he's going to be just as good. He's had some. He's had some okay matches, and he's had some good matches. That gimmick match he had with old fuck boy, when he had the burnt shit on his face, it was a, it was a good match. They were they were beating the fuck out of each other, and he sold that super kick so good. So that's what's leading me to be like, yo, man, like he's really trying to put the kid over and trying to build these guys to be main roster guys. That's where they're going. I'm not mad at it. He's good. Gutter's already good enough to me to go to main roster. The fact that he's just coming to NXT America, it's kind of like Dolph coming down. You know, somebody who's seasoned, somebody who can go, somebody who has all the tools to make it on the main roster. They're just coming there to either enhance talent and make the product better, which is what we want. Uh, Stixy Drip Drip, I mean, you got the oos juice. You got the juice, oos. I've been drinking, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what did you think of this? I thought it was good. I thought it was hilarious. Um, Hawaiian 50 Cent is something we need more of on TV, especially with Must See Malcolm. And uh, I hope we do get it. And like I said, I hope we get some of the promos of of Malcolm trying to get him in Diamond Mine. So I was entertained. You know, when Hawaiian 50 Cent defeats Walter, it's going to take every ounce of my willpower not to jump on my phone and be like, Caesar, did you just say that? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to watch that shit live. <laughs> it's the main event. Speaking of overselling and selling well, it's the show off. Dolph Ziggler versus the pulse of NXT, Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, very early on, we get a this is awesome chant. Of mm-hmm. course, we know these two can go. Commercial picture in picture, Dolph is able to take the lead with every headlock. The veins in Ciampa's head get more and more visible. Uh, lots of near falls get the crowd hyped. We get a fight forever chant. Uh, Ciampa's head bounced off the ring post, followed by a zigzag on the outside. Uh, Ciampa's left arm was useless for some reason. I still don't know why that happened. He didn't attack Ciampa's arm at all, I don't believe. I don't know if it's some... I think, I think no, he was attacking his neck. I, I, I know, he was attacking his neck because Ciampa had neck issues. Yeah. I think they were trying to sell the fact that it has his arm kind of went dead because he was attacking the neck. Okay, uh, while in rear naked choke, camera zooms in on Ciampa's beard that had snot or slobber in it, looking like some Skeeter Doom. Uh, Ciampa with air raid crash on apron to Ziggler. The cameraman attacks Ciampa. Super kick to Ciampa for the win. Robert Roode is cameraman, and Robert Roode is back in NXT for now. Uh, Attack continues on Ciampa. Braun for the save. Apparently, there's a tag match set. For next week, Stixy Drip Drip, the main event, sees the show off versus our favorite psycho killer. What did you think? This was a really good match. It was main event worthy. Um, and I wouldn't expect anything less from both guys. Ziggler coming down, putting on a hell of a good match with Ciampa. Ciampa can go. Ziggler can go. Um, and it's gonna it's giving Ziggler a little bit more of a spotlight than what he would normally get on. Mm. on the main roster so i thought it was a really good main event and it'll be interesting i'll be entertained to see him face broad the braun breaker at uh stand deliver and i can't wait to count and to watch the tag team match next week you know cesar this is going to count towards dolph ziggler's five percent win percentage at the end of the year he finally mm-hmm. wins a fucking match uh it's on nxt against our favorite tomasa champa what did you think of the main event of nxt this week this shit fucking delivered. It was really, really good. 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 Um, no, this this was worthy of a main event. 
these guys went after it. Yeah, like so many false finishes, so many high spots, uh, great selling overall, uh, good dynamic in the match, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then, yeah, Bobby Roode at the end with the camera uh, while Dolph was like out inside the ring. Uh, all of it was great. I mean, yeah, of course, fight forever. And then Wade was like, yeah, you might want them to fight forever, but I don't think their bodies can take it at this rate they're going. Boy. Uh, boy. Boy. Dude, this match this match was great. It was super great. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was fun. You know what? You know what it was. Come on now. Dude. So it was fucking free. Money. It was damn. Old. It was a pay per view level match on a fucking Tuesday. It was free money. Uh, I, I like the way. I, I'm not mad with the way it ended because if you're if you're setting up, Dolph, Dolph doesn't need to win the big one anymore. He's been he's been in the rag for a while. I mean, it would be nice to see him win a heavyweight title again. I'm not mad at it. Um, but uh, yeah, he doesn't need to win the big one anymore. And we've already had Champa Braun at least twice. So if you want to space that out, throw a guy in there like Dolph to, uh, you know, give Braun like at least another win as as champ. So you can uh, space it out a little bit. So I wasn't mad at it. Uh, I thought it was a thought it was a really, really great match, though. You know what I wish would have happened? I, I know this is straight fire like, like we would know. But, man, if they would have had Cesaro in this role. Oh man! Yeah, Cesaro versus Champa, Cesaro versus Breaker. That that shit set up. It would have been, uh, it would have been fantastic. But sadly, that did not happen. Uh, before we close out this week's episode of the Tripod, I would like to get your gentlemen's thoughts on APPW Dynamite's latest episode that hasn't been taken down yet. Uh, did you guys watch it, Cesar? Yeah, I watched it. it the latest one, right? Yes. I want. Did you post Sunday Night Skeet? Like earlier or something? There's, there's no Sunday night skeet. Uh, okay. Well, then, yeah, I watched the latest episode of Dynamite. Yeah. What'd you think? I know, uh, fucking Blake and the well, ring. Well, I was just going to fuck them up because I would let them tag in the ring and I was just going for a maximum. Damn, I didn't care who won that shit. You, you beat man, the, the holy hell out of that rib sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> that I motherfucker was... didn't know what hit him. <laughs> nah, I ain't worried about that cracker. Uh, Sticks and BQ got it done in the ring immediately. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mother, Qu- the- Mother Quarter told me he had a catch and drip jet back to fucking Jake's mom's place. Mom, yeah, Jake's mom's, mom's waiting. waiting to go. Jake's mom's waiting to BQ whoop that ass. That bitch um, was in heat. No, <laughs> she was yeah. waiting in the hangar when the drip jet landed. What uh, <laughs> there was a women's uh battle royal. Who was, yeah, who won the- I didn't Our really Lady Pam. Remember. Our Lady Pam, Our Lady Pam, Pam. yeah. One of the women's battle royal. Uh, Jake, Jake the Snake, not going for the pin after the DDT. That when, was when this when uh when Piss Zank was like orange on the head, like literally hit him with the DDT, whooped his monkey ass. It was JH. Well, doesn't matter. Yeah, JH doesn't matter. <laughs> One of them idiots. One of them idiots. Yeah, whooping Jake. Uh, we all knew JH was going to lose that match. He was guaranteed to lose that match. Was whooping JH's ass all up and down the rang. Uh, once again, beat that cracker when he wasn't like poisoning me with Rona. Beat that cracker in like 38 seconds in the rang. Whooping JH's monkey ass. Spiked him with the DDT. It was it was done. It was done. He wasn't gonna kick out. And just didn't immediately go for the pin. I don't understand what was going on there. No understanding what's going on there. Uh, props with the most uh, annoying promo of all time. Didn't watch it. Didn't even watch it. Wow, JH, you you didn't watch nailed it. the. If you're trying to be annoying, that was off the charts. Didn't right watch there. it. I heard that bird squeak twice, and fa- and I skipped the whole thing. <laughs> I was like, if this bird squeaks for the next, like, I don't care how long he talks. I skipped the whole thing. I went straight to the. I heard that bird go beep, beep, and done, done. I would tough. rather listen to the Fudget Club's theme song than the bird. Uh, yeah, anyway. I would I would rather listen to Bresky go on a 20-minute diatribe <laughs> about some dumb shit that he does when he cuts a promo than twice than listen to that fucking bird. My fucking guy Dice over here about trying taking his own life after he heard the first minute of that fucking bird. He swore off birds for the rest of his nine oh, lives. Well, He's like, that's he enough. Was, he looked at me enough. and he was like fucking... 
Put the put some fucking Q-tips in my ears. I'm done. Yeah. Well, Sticks, you and Brother Quata, you got it done in perhaps the fastest match, besides Cesar murdering Jake the Snake, the fastest fucking match in Dynamite history. You and old BQ there in a tornado tag. The Fudget Club and the Fuck It Club clashed once again. My God, you made quick work. Uh, these two um, right to censor wannabes. Do uh, you have any thoughts on the rest of the episode or your match? Young quarter, young 25 told me, hey, Jake's mom's hanging at, waiting for me at the hangar. We got we to wrap this shit up. Because he's <laughs> like, I'm hangar. not going to open this shit up tonight, so we got to wrap this shit up. So we did that. And I just got to say this, what the fuck? So, so we take the entertainment from back out the... At the back alley of the fucking big brunch cantina. Cantina. Bring his ass back into the Royal Rumble. And now this motherfucker has a championship match. A guy I pinned. A man I pinned. He didn't do it. He didn't didn't retire. Back to the big brunch cantina. And now he's back. He's like like a Twinkie in the nuclear holocaust. He this survived. Yeah. Don't don't say hol- you. It's a little little touchy with the Holocaust and the Bretsky. Yeah, well, I do touchy when I have to watch Bretsky on my TV screen <laughs> once a week. Yeah, he's got a point. So, got a point. Like, we're, not, gonna, we're not saying we're Hitler. We're not going to no, kill him. I'm saying that. I'm it's saying he survived. Like a tweet. It's word association. <laughs> what what do you care? They're taking content down for fucking cells. No shit. They don't we have they people. Don't... We have we have paying customers. Who wanted to come up on Thursdays and throw tomatoes at the Great Bretsky 99 live behind the dumpster? And now they have to settle for we have to I have to get a I have to pay a busser to go out there with a po- with a poster and run around. <laughs> and then while they try to throw you, you, I mean, you have a Bretsky putty. You have a what Bretsky putty. Yeah, yeah. What is the bitch doing? The Cesar had to go buy the company Fathead to make a fucking Fathead of Bretsky to throw the stick on a fucking dumpster. Yeah. That way we can still have some fucking entertainment for the Patreon. Yeah. There's an 18-year-old kid with his first job. He's a busser. And when he works on Thursday nights, I have to be like, all right, kid. Young, you know what you're doing? I'm going to pay you an extra couple hundred, a couple hundred shekels. I just need you to grab the fat head, wipe it down, make it look clean. I need you to run outside the dumpster. So when people get three takes on their board, you got to run out there and be like, Burr! and say stupid bresky things. Make, like, make sure make sure your voice cracks and speak shitty yeah. Spanish while yeah. they throw tomatoes, right? While they throw tomatoes at you and run around <laughs> and uh, say stupid shit like, oh, I'm, I'm so slow because I got all this chili meat on my chest. <laughs> Uh, you gotta say dumb shit like that, and they gotta pay this kid out of pocket. Out of pocket. I mean, this guy had to, had to sew a bunch of used fucking skeet sheets to fucking use as a blanket to fucking to stay warm at night, and you brought him back. Right, the Mitch is fucking up. The Mitch is yeah. fucking up. You gonna fuck around? And the fucking club's gonna go make their own fucking wrestling promotion and fucking. You just just fucking up. That's what I'm saying, man. And see, see, he let he lets in a kill like 18 old APBW competitors, which would have filled out the fucking roster for the crumble. Cause he's crazy. No, 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 no. You gotta call Bretsky and Jake some crybaby yeah, ass bitches. Look, look, yeah. And Jake looking like fucking skeet Ali G in the fucking goddamn promos. What the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah, like, let yeah. this guy back. He's a fucking KKK member, and you let a broke ass Jew. How do you even become a broke ass Jew? I thought that's not even in the word. They save enough money. It's not in their DNA. Fucking, no. Yeah, yeah. The, he it's is letting his people now. down. You can't say Holocaust, but he's a Jew that was poor. Like that doesn't even make sense. That's an oxymoron. That's an oxymoron. Well, well ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know what we're fucking talking about, the new subscribers, if you sat through this much. Check out all of APPW's content. We got Dynamite. We have a pay-per-view coming up. Hopefully, I get my, I get it out by tomorrow night. It's Death Box, APPW's first ever February pay-per-view. Check it out tomorrow night. Get them views up. I still need to get the Royal Crumble above 30. It's not happening. But, you know, I digress. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. 
And until next time, people. Stay tuned.